you already played this game. I mean, it's been a while. A refresh it has. It has been. It has been a little while. Now it looks like Chief is muted. Body slamming them kids. Always got to get the body slam. Yep. Yeah, show them who's boss. Uh, all right. All right, so this game will be set in the SCP universe, as has been stated at least once or twice. No. <laughs> uh, for those of you unfamiliar with SCPs, it's set more or less modern day Earth, but there's a shadowy pseudo governmental organization that is tasked with securing, containing, and protecting both the world from and anomalous objects from the greater public. Anomalous objects defined as anything that breaks the uh, the laws of normalcy, like basically anything that's weird. Could be anything from, you know, a concrete statue that when you're not looking at it, it teleports behind you and snaps your neck, to... Uh, a cake that if it's not eaten by the end of the day, tomorrow there's two cakes. And if those two cakes aren't eaten by the next day, there's four cakes. Until the, eventually the world is covered in cakes. Mm. And every day the cakes come back. <laughs> so there's a whole, there's a, a wide array of nonsensical anomalous shit out there. For the cakes, do they reset back to one, or does it just stay? No, whatever, whatever it multiplies to is the new baseline. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah. How do they get it back to one, then? It doesn't. You don't. Well, how do they know that it would multiply, then? Because they observed it. They had the one cake, and then they, they had someone eat it. Then the next day, like the next morning, the cake came back. So like, okay, well, we'll let it sit today. Then the next morning, there were two cakes. And I'm like, oh, okay. that's weird. Uh, so let's try it. Let's... So it's two cakes now. Yeah, so it's two cakes now. So they ate them again. <laughs> like, okay, next morning, it's two cakes again. Like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so they so they left them out. They didn't eat them uh, like the next day to see what happens. And then they doubled. Like they just double every time you don't eat them. So there's four cakes. Yeah, so there's four cakes. I think and, I think uh, in the actual article, the number is up to like... Four cakes now. <laughs> no, I think the number is up to like 60-something cakes. Oh, no. <laughs> so there's a bunch of D-class that are just... <laughs> their whole job is to eat cakes. <laughs> Jesus. That's their job every day. They eat cakes. <laughs> fucking speak to me, senpai. Until they fucking... Yes. Until they die. <laughs> Or, or until monthly terminations happen. Which will not necessarily be a thing in this version of the SCP uh, Foundation. <clears throat> so the way the, the way the ba basically the way the SCP Foundation works is they have a variety of very large sites all over the world where they contain anomalous objects in a variety of ways. Each object, if you read an individual article, it'll list its containment procedures first, which is a description of how that object is contained. It could be something as simple as like, you know, it's like those cakes. It's okay, they're in a room and every day they have a bunch of people eat the cakes. Those are the containment procedures. Um, there are also each object has a uh, a containment class. The three standard ones are Safe, Euclid, and Keter. Safe is simple. It's the type of object you can throw in a box, lock the box, and forget about it. 
You never have to think about it again. Euclid is something you have to actively do, something to keep contained, so the cakes in this case are Euclid. Keter is something that is usually dangerous, but is often just something you have to go through either extremely complicated procedures or there's always a risk of the thing getting out anyway. <laughs> Examples of that are like SCP-682, the uh, hard-to-destroy reptile that they have it contained in a, bat of, a vat of acid, constantly dissolving it, but it's also digesting the acid and regenerating constantly. And at any point, it could just break the fuck out. But it usually doesn't. That's kind of cool. There's also a variety of other weirder containment classes, but those are much more specific to the individual article. Um, a, co a relatively common one is Thaumiel, which is usually an object... <laughs> and anomalous objects that, that is used to contain other objects. <laughs> like in this case, uh, Thief's character and Savage's characters. Hi. And Nox's character, when he does join. Come on. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what? You would um, all be example of th uh, an example of a Thaumiel entity. And you're not necessarily, like, you know, they're not all necessarily sapient or sentient entities, but um, the, the Foundation has basically unlimited resources to do whatever they need to do. And, um... Something else, your characters will all generally have access to the SCP database. So you'll be able to research stuff at your at your character like in character downtime, and you'll also have a skill, like a custom skill called SCP database, which will represent your character's general knowledge about uh Nox, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even click that. <laughs> no, just reading the <laughs> oh, is, that, is, that, is that druid craft? Or uh, no, that's prestidigitation. Okay. <laughs> um, but the database skill will just represent how often your character like does research on their on their own time and how much they retain. Which the custom skill will be like your your int mod plus proficiency plus your clearance level which um, I believe Lauren's character, Researcher Daly, has a clearance level of three, Gersh has a, Gershwin has a clearance level of two, and everyone else would have a clearance level of one. So there's certain articles you guys can't read. <clears throat> Bet Bettany does not like that, but the player understands. <laughs> Well, you're also relatively new to the organization. If you show that you can be trusted, you may be given higher clearance levels. Because, you know, there are plenty of high-level agents, doctors, researchers that are anomalous themselves. The, um, the upper tiers of management, the O5 Council, they are almost all anomalous themselves. They all have some weird shit going on. They're all basically immortal, partially because they one of the SCPs they contain is the Fountain of Life, or the Fountain of Youth, so that's a whole thing. I mean, yeah, but, it, it makes sense. Like, yeah. the, the, the character wouldn't like it, but even she would understand it. I mean, with, with what I got going on, you probably don't want that in the hands of an entity. You know, it doesn't exactly have a whole lot of memory. <laughs> Yeah, or just, like, the main thing about the Foundation is they are cautious. They are cautious, and they are cold, but they are not cruel. They are only, they only do what needs to be done. 
they're not malicious or evil in any capacity, depending on your interpretation <laughs> and depending on exactly who you are, but they avoid unnecessary risk as much as they can. Uh, any questions about that? Shit. No, <laughs> not for me. Sorry. I was fixing my shit. Anyways. All right. Um, your group will be part of what's called a mobile task force, which is basically like a super squat, uh, SWAT team. Um, Mobile meaning you usually don't stick around one location. You get sent out to do things. And, you know, there's a wide variety of things you might do. Recover objects, go handle a containment breach, hunt somebody down. You know, any anything that you could conceive of that would be a mission, that's kind of what you guys do. Um, you will be reporting to the personnel director of the site. Um, Henry Werner, I believe is his name. So that'll be like your, he's basically your boss. Then you'll have another NPC, uh, Edward Graham. He's your communications officer. You'll all get what is basically like a quantumly entangled little headset that he coordinates communication between you guys with. He stays back at the site, and no matter where you go in the world, he can communicate with you. Sorry, Henry what and Graham what? Uh, Henry Werner. W-E-R-N-E-R. -E and and the, the other guy was Edward Graham. Thank you. So it's Werner, the site director, and Graham, the like research... Uh, uh, Werner is the personnel director, not the site personnel director. director. Yes. Okay. The site, the site director is somebody different. Um, and Edward Graham is the communications officer. So those are like two of your most important NPCs. You'll also have two NPCs that you can choose from to take with you on most missions. Uh, let me just pull his. I can't remember the one guy's first name. Let me just pull it. Pull this bullshit up. Why didn't I write that shit down? Where is it? <laughs> I didn't the write this one guy. Problems of the down. game master. I didn't write this one down. Okay. Well, so you have two you have two options. Um Flynn or Yurkov. Yurkov doesn't have a last name. He just goes by Yurkov. Flynn does have a last name. I just don't remember what it is. Maybe maybe Zia has it in their perfect notes. No, I'm pretty sure I have terrible notes. <laughs> well, either way. Um, for most missions, you can choose between these two guys. Um, they're mostly to fill in um, holes in your party comp, depending on what was going on. Um, Flynn is like is basically a sorcerer, flesh crafting sorcerer. Um, these are both Sarkic entities, which are the uh, the flesh worshiping cannibals. These two aren't cannibals, but, uh, you know. So Flynn is like a sorcerer type, and Yurkov is like a beast barbarian type. He turns into a giant mole. I'm sorry, what? He, a giant mole. You ever oh, played I heard Bloody you. That, that was shock. Oh, okay. Bloody fucking roar. Yeah, he, he's... Has to game. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's basically Bakuryu, Hot. but like, but like a, you know, a brawler instead of a, a ninja. Um, but other than that, the 
general formula is like you'll get a mission mission and you either get like dropped out to it in you know a personnel carrier or you get a vehicle or sometimes you'll get teleported there uh okay it turns out i have very good notes for mission one and mission three but absolutely nothing written down too <laughs> that's the one i would need <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> of course um there's also some information in the uh mission debriefings channel in this discord if you want to look at past stuff like there's a few interviews that i posted in there there's security footage and then there's like monster fat blocks i made that you can look at if you want um but that's is that's that's is the is the flynn's name in, in his interview didn't you make a whole video about no no that's the never mind that's just a ah, drive. you're right Jacob Flynn. His name is Jacob Flynn. Got it. That interview is now in the uh, in the debriefings. Um, but yeah. So other than that, um, I think that's the basics for uh, that. Any any questions? I think I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No questions about uh, the SCP Foundation or the world itself. No, I feel like I'm familiar enough. Yeah, I think you like yeah. you've been you've been listening and reading to them for a, a little while. Yeah, not to the extent they like you have, but yeah, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched those we'll videos. Just so. the okay, yeah. you're both talking at the same time. <laughs> All bad. Oh, good. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I watched the videos you, you sent to the group chat, so I, I okay. think I've got a pretty decent yeah. handle on it. Okay. Yeah, any any questions that do come up, feel free to ask. Like, I'm not <laughs> expecting anybody to be, like, super familiar with the setting. Yeah, I was going to say, there's so much to it that you kind of just have to get the gist, and then... Yeah, like, you just get the basics, and on. then... And then you just kind of get drug along until like, oh, I kind of, I understand that now. Um, all right, let's go over uh, some house rules that I that we're using, more or less. Uh, we went over the stats and power rolling. Um, so everybody has their seven stats. Yep. Including their Hume. Yeah, I didn't put my Hume on my roll 20 sheet yet, and I don't think... I did Lawrence. Okay. I'll just get it in there somewhere. Um, Actually, no, I do have mine. I have mine as a, as an extra resource on my. Yeah. Own, so, so it's a very visible. Yeah, note. same thing I did too. Okay, that makes sense. Um. Yeah, the Hume won't come into into play all that often, unless of course you force it to. <laughs> okay. What what what, what is Hume? Uh, so Hume is the um, in universe. Hume is a uh, a standard unit of measurement for the relative strength of reality. Because one of the most common types of anomalies that the foundation deals with are called reality benders, and they're just you know people or things that just change reality around them. Like they can turn your gun into a bagel if you try to shoot them. Something like that. Yeah. You know, like, quote, real magic. That, yeah. like, um, so something <clears throat> that would require you to make, like, a Hume saving throw is something that would try to change something directly about you. Whereas something that would control your, try to use magic to control your mind, that would be a more specific kind of effect, and that would use a wisdom save or whatever. But if they're trying to change reality, it would be like an entity trying to change something on your character sheet. Okay. Okay. So they're not going to come in contact all or into play all that often, but when they do, they may be serious. Oh, um, that's all, problematic. 
Um, you will all also get access to a, a, a small item called a mobile SRA, which is a like a little handheld item. That acronym stands for a Scranton Reality Anchor, which is an anti-reality changing thingy. Um, both Zia and Lauren, their characters have one, but I will post the text for it in uh, in this Discord. In uh, I guess I'll just throw it in house rules. So you guys can add one of those to your sheet, and they work uh, how the text describes. But basically, like whenever you make a, a Hume save, you can kind of activate it as a reaction to uh, gain gain advantage on Hume's checks and saves for a very short time. Or you can activate it um, as a bonus action to get that bonus for a, a longer length of time, but still not all that long. It's just kind of an emergency little thing. I'm using the shit out of that. I rolled an eight. I lost stats. <laughs> mm. Oh, you didn't put your lowest stat in like strength or something? No, no. The between the uh the the um entity plus myself, it it wouldn't make sense. Because she was an investigator and this creature is a little strong and fast and a little scary okay. looking, so that's fair. I think low Hume could also make enough sense for your situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's mostly it for Hume. Um, for, like, I generally try to tune up martial characters a little bit in my games, usually through, like, special items and stuff, but uh, certain fighting styles and, like, weak subclasses might get some extra bonuses, but uh, nobody's uh, chosen those things, I think. I'm pretty sure... Dr. Daly is an alchemist artifact. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But I was specifically talking about uh, Marshalls. Um, oh, okay. But no, there is some some stuff for Daly. Um, there's a whole item that I was working on. I, I can't find it. Is it the philosopher's bag? <laughs> no, it's like a... Uh, it's I forget what it was supposed to be, but it's like a spell slot recycler. Oh, yeah. Like, whenever you miss with a spell attack roll of, like, a, a leveled spell, like, you can recycle the spell slot. Nice. Like, use a, like, use a charge to not spend it. Mm. Because daily was just missing constantly. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah. And Alchemist is such a cool subclass, conceptually, and it's so terribly supported by the those skills yeah. and roles that it yeah, they're pretty terrible. So yeah. that, I'll do I'll do something with that. Um, so we are, we're also going to use some modified resting rules. Uh, short rests are five minutes, and then every short rest you take scales up by another like five to ten minutes. But usually there'll be some there'll be enough time pressure that you're not going to be able to just like. Fight one thing, short rest. Fight one thing, short rest. But Gersh does have a homebrew cantrip that like lets him let you use your uh, hit die. Hit die. Mm -hmm. So um, it's more the abilities that are going to be affected by that. Yeah. Um, long rests take the same amount of time, and they reset all your abilities and spell slots. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they don't heal at all. Instead, you just get all your hit die back. But the way uh, the way this game, so f the few times that I've ran it, the few missions we've gone on, um, nobody's ever taken a long rest. Each mission tends to be like effectively one adventuring day, so that hasn't come up. <laughs> I mean, fair. So we'll see. We'll see how uh, how that how that might change if we go on a different kind of mission. Oh, yeah. Uh, class and subclass tools and shit tune up. So, like, yeah. Alchemist will get a little better when I get around to it. 
Yeah, re- reality bending stuff. That was the Hume Hume related things. Uh, database knowledge checks. We went over this earlier. Um, it's you know a skill you're pro- it's an intelligent skill you're proficient in plus uh, your clearance level. So already went over that. Oh yeah, I forget. Can you do uh, a custom skill on roll twenty? Yes. All right, cool. Dad. Um, then we'll be using uh, impactful criticals, where instead of just you get an extra dice, you get a maxed out dice instead. Cool. So instead of rolling an extra d8 for a longsword, you just you roll as normal, and you just add an additional eight to the damage. Uh, bonus action potions. I wrote that down as a homebrew uh, house rule, but that, that's just a rule, <laughs> basically. Um, we'll be handling resistance and vulnerabilities a little a little differently. Whenever something is resistant or vulnerable to a particular damage type, whenever it takes that damage type, um, instead of just doubling the damage of that particular damage type, you get extra dice. So if you inflict... Um, like if you inflict fire damage to something that's vulnerable to fire, you'll get a number of extra damage dice equal to your proficiency bonus because you're the one doing the damage. And the size of the dice will be affected by like the creature's vulnerability. So, you know, if there if a creature's only mildly vulnerable to it, it'll be like a D four. But if it's really vulnerable to it, it'll be like D twelve. I'm with it. So having some source of a damage type is always going to be useful in some way. Uh, firearms, you get, you guys get guns. They, guns. They shoot bullets. Um, we do have. I did come up with a whole. Uh, firearm customization system, but uh, that's not necessarily something we have to go into right away. I don't remember where I posted it. Oh, yeah. It it's in... Right. Yeah, it's also in the uh, character guidelines uh, channel uh, in this Discord. So you can look through that if you want. You guys will all start with uh, 3,000 gold to use for those purposes. But it's not something you need to have done right away. All right, how much gold? Uh, 3,000. That'll be your initial stipend, and you'll get more um, whenever you complete a mission. Which is basically like... You know, whenever you successfully complete a mission, you get paid in these like in these credits that you can spend at the armory to do stuff. And then you also get like narratively paid in real world money that you can, I don't know, do whatever the fuck you want with. You can send home to your family. You can put it in the bank. You can buy lunch, I guess. Um, and then finally, for the house rules, um, custom or signature spells and abilities. Like, you know, you guys can come up with your own spells and feats and abilities and whatever. Just We can discuss what you want to do, what it's going to require in downtime, because between missions, you guys generally get some downtime. So between each mission, you guys can come up with shit. Like... It might be difficult, depending on what you want to do. Like, you know, if you were a... Like, if your character doesn't have any teleportation-related spells, just creating a custom spell that has a teleportation effect will be kind of difficult. So it has to be something that your character kind of understands or can understand. But it's that's something that would be, like, discussed. Just know that it's an option. Uh, That's it for house rules.
Any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, for your your crit, you said you know you uh you get um uh you do the max dice, right? Now yes. I've got so I've got like cantrips that you know after like level five they do like say two d eight force. So if yes. I crit with that, does it do three d eight force or four d? Or sorry, uh, does it, do I get the uh? An eight added on or a sixteen? Because you get it, you would get a sixteen. Okay, I'm just changing all my my attacks now for the, the crit. Okay. Yeah, it's just yeah. so instead of, you know, oh, you get two extra dice and you roll a one and a two. Ah, cool. That's great. Thanks. <laughs> uh, just keeps crits working. Makes them feel a little more impactful. All right, and then um, general, like kind of general structure. Um, I'll I design most of my encounters, uh, kind of like Zia said, to uh, be, I guess, just fun fight. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm not always necessarily looking to like drain the resources out of your characters, even though a lot of fights will have that as a side effect. But that's not the only purpose of encounters and puzzles and whatever. I'm usually looking to engage your characters in some kind of at least minorly interesting way. Like some sort of unique... Uh, like positioning where you know there's a bunch of enemies you've already fought but they're in a weird just a weird layout or positioning and there's like more of them than you've ever dealt with before so you guys better figure it the fuck out that kind of stuff for sure this is gonna be fun just like the, the wizard that just hit level five and you happen to run across a group of goblins that are all grouped together in a 30 foot radius yeah, there's as many of them that you can fit in a 20-foot radius. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, if there's, like, three martial guys in in a party, I will, like, oh, look, there's a bunch of, like, martial-inclined enemies for you to fight. Oh, that's weird. What? No. The universe, like, they be loving you, man. Yeah, it's that kind of stuff. It's, um... Um, same thing with boss design. Um, I try to make it, I try to make everything interesting. Uh, I tend to homebrew basically everything. Um, I don't really use CR at all. Like I have a, I have a different system that I use. Um, I will, for example, I'll take all of your ACs, all of your HPs. I'll find out like everybody's average damage. And I'll use those as guidelines to make the monsters. Okay. okay, the whole party has an average to hit bonus of like plus seven. That means monster AC can comfortably hover between like 15 to 18 without it getting too crazy and everybody either missing or hitting all the time. I feel like you haven't seen my rolls before, but I get you. Yeah, no, I, I I assume average rolls for everything because it makes the math easier to digest. But, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. In the case of like somebody rolling shit, um like in the second mission in in a there was a boss fight where researcher daily I think three turns in a row they missed with their shotgun. So like the fourth time they, I just had their shot hit, go wide, hit a stalactite on the ceiling that fell down on the on the guy they were trying to shoot at, and had them roll damage. So sometimes they're success. Yeah, like there'll be effects like that, but like that'll be in the case of oh, you've missed your fourth attack in a row. Uh, here, roll some dice. Yeah, yeah. Like, that kind of idea will happen on occasion, but also it'll happen for enemies. <laughs> Makes sense. Like, if you guys don't get hit in a while, be like, huh, 
Look at that. Fifteen dudes just showed up. That's weird. Um, I also tend to run a lot of stuff in Theater of the Mind instead of having um, instead of having actual maps. I think the whole first dungeon was Theater of the Mind, <laughs> except for the boss fight. Yeah. Well, I think all the fights, there was an actual map, but the whole dungeon itself yeah. was Theater of the Mind. Yeah, no, no dungeon maps, just battle maps. Yeah, okay. yeah you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's usually how I run it. The fucking audacity. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <sighs> how dare um, you? I will warn you, you are probably going to get a... Maps. Probably going to get a lot of questions during those moments. Oh, that's fine. I, I was getting those the first time I did it. I want to know the texture of the wall, what color it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's spongy. It's spongy and what actually kind as of sponge? You, well, it's Are hard we to tell because your, arm, or like... your hand is now stuck to it. Hot. And it's being pulled in. Makes like sense. Being... Damn. <laughs> <laughs> The whole facility is a mimic. Get fucked. Uh, fuck yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Akira me, daddy. Fuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the, the vibe there. Uh, any questions about whatever the fuck I just said? Oh, you're totally get pretty it. straightforward. Okay. Um, but yeah, if at any point you ever have like a, a question about SCPs or the universe or anything like that, feel free to ask it, even if it's not directly to re related to what's going on. Fair. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Good. Let me just put this over here. Bring up this. <laughs> and we can basically get started if everybody's ready. I'm yeah. pretty much ready. The only thing I need to do is look back in the chat and find that um, focus you were giving me. I can add it in. But other than that, I'm good. Oh, it should be... You should have access to it in... Uh... The only thing in my journal is my character sheet. Yeah, same. Also, I cannot figure out how to make a custom skill. Okay. Uh, how do you make custom skills? I forget. I don't know if you can custom skills in. All right, Savage, you should have access to it now. Thank you. Should be in MTF items. Yeah, no, the character sheet doesn't allow for you to just custom skills in. Really? One, I felt like one it... of those things. So what you can do is is you a can... macro for it, but that's you don't have to go into that far. You you can just do a global skill modifier and just put in your put the skill in there. It won't it won't be in the exact same spot with the rest of your skills, but it'll be just a couple spots underneath it. Yeah. It's oh, probably okay. the All right, so I gotta show it. the field. Okay. Oh, and then I can do the same for Hume. Cool. All right. I felt like I, I felt like I've done that. I felt like I've made custom skills. I mean, so there's nothing in the character sheet. Yeah. This would be a database check. And it would be 1d20 plus 7. -ish. Also, for anyone, once before you completely finalize your characters, Resilient Hume is a feat that exists. Okay. Ooh. All right, Makes yeah, that sense. was easy. Okay. Yeah. And then... Okay. Oh. Yes. Oh, 
Cool. All right. That wow, wasn't so bad. Still think I have to add an item or two, but oh yes, done. All right. All right. Um, well, everybody here knows each other more or less, except uh, Lauren is is new to us, not new to me and Zia. How you doing, Lauren? Hey, I'm good. All right. If everyone's ready. We'll. I guess we'll just jump in. Bet. So, uh, Gershwin Daily, you it's been um, it's been two or three weeks since uh, the containment breach you guys experienced. Uh, the site is mostly is pretty much fully repaired at this point. Um, the foundation works pretty quickly. Uh, neither of you have seen much of Laszlo or of of Richter or. Uh, or Trey in the past in the past week or so. Um, you're not sure why you haven't been uh, given any information about what they're doing or where they are. Might be something you want to ask uh, the personnel director next time you see them, which will be soon, because you've just gotten uh, gotten some a memo to report to the uh, MTF meeting room later today to go over uh, your new team composition and your next mission. Okay. Oh, goody. <laughs> uh, is there anything in particular you guys have been working on in the time since your last mission? Um, uh, no, I mean, Gersh has been trying to, like, Still try to probably master his prosthesis. Um, just kind of like getting a, a, an array of different objects because it like it learns every time it touches something new, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's just been kind of he's been touching everything that he can. Yeah, he's uh, just been fucking with shit. Yeah. I'm trying to touch it. No. Creepy. <laughs> Just just getting your weird hovering discs all over <laughs> shit. Um, Daly's been working on um the rat phone contin contingency and <laughs> figuring rat. out uh, <laughs> devices to get the rats there faster. Okay. Well, the rats don't have any too much trouble getting to anywhere because they sort of just fade into existence at a location. But but we want we want like rat like weapons. We want rat <laughs> deliver heavy ordnance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, in, in that case, give me uh, give me an investigation check. See how. Uh... See how your research has been going. I'm rolling on um, the Indie Beyond it's just faster. Oh, so okay. you get between here and Discord, but um, 27. 27 that's uh you've been making some pretty reasonable progress there um it's it gets a little squiffy trying to uh keep the rats consistently armed one of the main problems you've been running into is you know you outfit a particular rat it fades out of existence and then the next time you call it in it'll have like some of the gear you provided it but it'll be weirdly mismatched. Like, if you gave it a full, like, set of tactical gear, like, it'll be missing the pants and, like, some other little pieces. Then the next time it fades in, it'll be missing other pieces, but the first piece it didn't have will be back. It's it's strange. 
Okay. But you you you're definitely making progress on that front. Nice, nice. But uh, yeah, if there's if there's nothing else you'd want to do, uh, you can just report to the meeting room. I guess I'm going to show up there a little bit late, but I will be there with bells on. Excited to see, well, really excited to find out what happened to the rest of the team since I haven't seen anybody. Gershwin shows up five minutes early. Of course. Uh, Gershwin, what is your what is your guys' passive perception when you guys do walk in? Oh. Uh, high. How so high? 20. 20. Okay, good. All right, you walk in. You you see direct uh, personnel director Werner. He's sitting at the desk. He's been... He's, like, kind of getting a, a packet together. Hmm. Um, there's... You definitely see some new snacks in the back uh, on that snack table. Hmm. And it definitely looks like there's some more coffee options on the coffee maker. Ah, excellent. But other than that, you know, it's the same old meeting room. Hmm. Personnel director. Good morning. Dr. Daly, thank you for, uh... Thank you for attending. No problem. Are... Daly immediately notices the new snacks. Helps herself to some. Not really. Yeah, there's a yeah. few snacks that are written in a language that you're pretty sure is not from this planet. Possibly this dimension. Where are these from? Oh, those were uh, some extra snacks from 261. And you guys can uh, give me a database wrong. check. You guys can give me a database check to see if you know what that is. Yeah, we just uh, we just belong to an interdimensional treat box club. We get a box every month. Different dimensions. <laughs> okay, 17 is good enough. And what about you, Daily? This one you're going to have to do on D&D Beyond. I didn't set it up on Roll20. Yeah, what is the database check? What do I roll for that? Should be um, all the way to the bottom of your skills. Yeah, you should already have one. Okay. Yeah, you got one in there. It's plus nine. Uh, she's not talking. She's on push to talk. Oh, okay. Well, that's coming through. Oh, there you go. Uh, 27. That's uh, pretty good. <laughs> so you would both know 261 is the pan-dimensional vending machine. It's a weird awesome. object, and they move it from site to site time, from time to time, and it's been at site 27 for a little bit. Um, it was actually on the random encounter table you could have rolled <laughs> during the containment <laughs> breach, but nobody did. So... No, we just got the devil instead. Yeah, you got the literal devil. <laughs> Ooh, so, pan-dimensional vending machine. Yeah, and basically awesome. what it does is you put some money in and you hit a button and you get a snack from a different dimension. Sometimes they're just like weird flavors of Kit Kats. Sometimes it's like a little package with a bunch of like live animals inside. And when you <laughs> open it, it flash fries all of the animals into little popcorn chicken nuggets. So I picked one at random. What did I get then? 
uh, yes, that's the database clearance uh, savage. Um, so the snacks that are there are pretty normal-ish. Like they're nothing crazy. Like they don't have, they don't shoot lasers or or taste like sound or anything. Um, but... Or slash fry little animals. Like come on. Yeah. No, these are these are some normal ones. Uh, those super weird ones are fairly rare. Um, <laughs> gotta pay but, extra. <laughs> yeah. But no, you got like some seaweed flavored Cheetos. Basically, they don't have uh... the Cheetos label. But they look like Cheetos that are green, and there's seaweed okay. all over the packaging. Nice. All right. I'll pick at some, and then I'm going to request that uh, put it in a request for some of those stranger ones, so I could study them later. Well, you can go ahead and put in a request next time you're at your desk. Which might not be for a few days. So I wanted to go over your new team composition with you. Days. So Trey has been showing some uh, instability in their abilities. So we've been we've taken him out of active duty for now. Not sure when he might be. Uh, he might be capable again, but we'll keep you posted. Has he gone viral again? You know he has. I'm not even sure why you have to ask that question. And I assume he took Roscoe with him. Yes, Roscoe is uh, fully cleared to stay with him. Um, in fact, Roscoe seems to have a, some stabilizing effect on Trey's reality bending, but uh, it's not too bad. It's not a lot. Though Roscoe himself does seem to be partially immune to Trey's abilities, so there isn't too, there's no risk in keeping Roscoe there. Otherwise, uh, our uh, Serpent's Hand liaison has returned to the library for now. Um, we've given him a special research assignment, and he's been questioning his uh, his place in things, so we gave him something a little simpler to do. Ah, something to keep him out of the way. More or less. Plus, his uh, unique uh, access to the library helps him, should help him to get us information we otherwise couldn't. He's researching everything on Sarkix that he can find. Mm. Again, I'll keep you in the loop on that one. But I wanted to give you the dossiers for the two new personnel that are joining your group. And he hands both of you to little packets. The uh, the first member is a... He's been with the Foundation for a little while. He's proven his loyalty. Well, I gotta actually stare directly at his name. Uh, Agent Dmitry Makarov. Makarov. Man, my accent. This I I have such trouble with this fucking character voice. That's just a mess. <laughs> every time it just comes out wrong every time. Yeah, um, and it's like different kinds of wrong too. It, yeah, it's. I don't know why. Um. But yeah, Gersh, you <laughs> may have run into him. You can give me a history check. Yeah. Daily, you're a lot less likely to have run into it. Nine plus eleven? What? Oh, you're adding the database check to it? Oh. 
Oh, because it's a modifier. Yeah. Yeah, if you ch- have it checked. to re-roll that, yeah. Or, or just, is it a nine, I guess? Right. Yeah, it would just be a nine. Okay. Uh, so with a nine, I don't think you've run into him. You may have heard of him, but nothing super specific. Some kind of walking time. Yeah, it's just wrong every time. I, I don't know why. I've, I've, I'm done with it. I've, I've, I give up. Yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, yes, the Spanish accent instead. <laughs> yeah, that was like a little Australian, like what the fuck? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, Makarov is a uh, a heavy weapons specialist. And seeing the mission, um, he should come in handy. The second member is uh, Agent, or, well, a newly agent, uh, Bethany Hubrick. She has her own host of uh, anomalous capabilities, but in the short time she's w- been with the Foundation, she has proven her use and... This mission is an opportunity for her to prove her own loyalty. Mm. Why does it seem like... Uh, oh, we don't have a name anymore, I guess. Why does it seem like my mobile task force is always the cat herding mobile task force? Am I getting a reputation? Well... There's two reasons. One, the mission is uh, going to be related to your area of expertise. And yes, you do seem to have a knack for cat herding. Yeah, been, it's been years. <clears throat> it's been years since I was just sent out with a squad of soldiers just a platoon Mm -hmm. going on at this point yeah savage i don't i don't know how to whisper for some reason (laughs) yeah um the name's long so it's going to be a problem and it's betteni by the way oh betteni oh i just assumed (laughs) there was an h uh from behind you guys, uh, you can hear uh, almost what sounds like a squelching as I kind of drop from the roof, and you hear, Hey, guys. And then immediately, um, this oozy form before you um, kind of looks a little reminiscent of, of Venom, but with a little more shifting. Uh, all of a sudden, the black ooze kind of gets almost absorbed into my skin, and before you stands about a five-foot-tall, eight-inch, um, like, uh, debutante-looking girl. I'm sorry, boys. Gotta understand, he, he likes to make an entrance, you know? <laughs> Hi, I'm Bettany. Daily is, like, taken with the ooze, like, fascinated. What is Artie, that? Artie getting out little vials, trying to take a sample. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. He, he doesn't like to be touched. He's, uh... It's it's not always good for uh, other people around him, but I understand I'd be joining your squad. I'm yes, on um, Apparently, and, like, Daily kind of, like, shoves, like, the little collection slides into her pocket. Stealthily. Give me a sleight of hand. But yes, this is Bettany. She'll be uh she'll be joining the squad. Or she'll be ah, joining yeah. your, your task force. Uh she's a bit of a stealth expert investigation. Her skill set is relatively wide. Uh yeah, daily you Flip those into your pockets as if they were never in your hands at all. <laughs> With a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's two nat 20s already, then. All right, it's going to be going to yeah. be a good game. You will be needing these. 
and Gersh kind of like touches touches her shoulder, just like plops a little uh a, a little nanobot on there for his uh one of his little um medical monitoring drones. Yeah, it's kind of like a flat fighter almost. And it yeah. gets into like a comfortable spot that's not going to uh, interfere with your movement, and it kind of flattens out and just sits there. Well, I'll give you that one, but remember, before you touch a lady, you always got to ask. And ah, she just kind of well, smiles. That's, that's covered in the uh, in the health waiver. It actually is. <laughs> He's your medic, and he does not ask. Unfortunately, I mean, don't maybe ask there's... like you haven't been touching everything, Gershwin. <laughs> that is the prosthesis. and that's covered in the sexual harassment training. The prosthesis must touch all of the things. I think uh, I'm a like working with y'all. Yeah, Bettany, you notice that a uh, Gershwin, who's like a reasonably older man. Like, fairly unassuming otherwise, but his right hand has a very obvious prosthetic. But instead of, like, a claw or, like, a like a hand attachment, it has, like, these three floating rings that kind of float out, like, a few inches, and they kind of shrink and contract to grasp and manipulate objects. It's a very odd hand replacement. So, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what is it the two of you do? Obviously, you're, you're a medic, I, with that little robot that done touch me, but what about you? Researcher, in general. Researcher of all things. Researcher of everything, really. Oh, we are going to get along famously. I used to research uh, occultist uh, topics for a YouTube channel, but, you know, I got little Henrik here now, and, well, to stay alive, uh, I'm going to have to work here now. Well, your occult knowledge will be great. I hope so. And it's around this time that, uh, Dimitri, you would be arriving. Yeah. So you just walk in with a giant salad? It's just like broccoli and like Brussels sprouts and like, you know. He's just actively shoveling them into his food hole. Yeah, the door opens up. How tall is Dimitri in his armor? Like eight feet. Yeah, you, you have to you have to kind of lean down to get into the door. Yeah. But yeah. No big big guy. Mostly because of the the armor, armor prosthesis that he's got going on. Um but the face mask is open currently and like most of his face is intact, except for, like, you know, the bottom portion, just above, like, the upper lip. That's mostly scar tissue and mechanical replacement. Ah, I was wondering who who it was that crushed that bench in the, in the mess room. shoddy construction but when he speaks it comes through very voxy you know like it's it's mechanical yeah it's not his vocal cords no yes yeah, since uh Mar makarov has joined the joined the site we've had to replace quite a few benches And he kind of does like a round, like a kind of like a walk around, looking him up and down. Hmm. 
I bet you cute inside that arm, ain't you? I sincerely doubt it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the reverb on that. That's how a fan burst was. Damn. <laughs> There isn't much left in the armor. Such a shame. Yes, Makarov had a run-in with 212 um, a few months a few months back. Oh. After a particularly well, after what was effectively a mortal wound. But uh, his team saved his life by putting him into two tw uh, 212. But uh, now he's in that armor. Oh, such a shame. And if you guys want to know what 212 is, you can roll a database check. We saw 212. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Gersh and uh, Ailey, you guys know what 212 is. Um, yeah, Betney, the... Yeah, with a 20, that's pretty good. 212 is the Improver. It is like a... Basically like a surgical robot. You know, like a, a, a robotic arm with a scalpel. And, and it improves whatever you put into it. Or like whoever you put into it, but the way it improves them is always very strange. Um, some like sometimes it will replace all your bones with ceramic. Sometimes it'll replace your tongue with like a rasping plasma chainsaw, or coat all your teeth in metal. It'll it just does weird things, and like forty percent of the time, people don't survive the operations. Sometimes it'll just take your organs out and clean them and then put them back. Bro, what the fuck? <clears throat> Sorry, out of character. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, during the containment breach, the party ran into it, and Gersh almost used it to get their hand back. But uh, decided against it. Yeah. Um, Sense but... prevailed. Yeah, uh, Makarov was one of the few cases where instead of, like, removing potentially foreign objects, like, you know, if you've been stabbed and you get put into it, you it'll take the knife out and do a bunch of stuff to you. But in Makarov's case, it incorporated the experimental power armor he was wearing into his physiology. Well, aren't we just a ragtag bunch, huh? Hmm. How am I supposed to medicate this man? Agent Makarov? Uh, as he's shoveling like a fistful of Brussels sprouts into his gob, he's just going to lift up his arm. And this small panel just pops open and there's various different injection ports. <laughs> Ah, very good. And uh, Gersh walks over, gives him a little little spider. Uh, yeah, the spider kind of like, it crawls over to that panel. And kind of incorporates more directly into it. Like, you can see the panel kind of expand a little bit, and there's an additional port in there that is very clearly your uh, your spider. But it's also very clearly fully integrated into his armor now, like in a few seconds. Dimitri's just going to kind of poke at it a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it feels <laughs> like there's a new piece there. Wow, that's truly impressive, Gershwin. Gersh, these are the same spiders you've had. <laughs> uh, They've never done that before. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um. This was because of your uh, your high 
like perception and stuff. Um, this was very clearly something that Makarov's armor did. Mm. Fascinating. Oh, so are you saying that this wasn't you, Garshwin? Hmm. These the bots are advanced, but I <clears throat> I've not been able to program them to do that. I have never had need. So it's the armor. Amazing. Seems like we're pretty lucky to have this guy. I mean, it's like a souped up Darth Vader. It is God's will that I am here. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> here oh, it goes. No. <laughs> oh, my. He's one of them. Yes, not that we are prepared for either a war zone or a dinner party. Not what like all your bases are covered. <laughs> well... We've been, there's been, um, some, there's been something we've sent a few agents after, and we've lost those agents. They've never reported back. Similar story to, uh, Stillwater. But, this is also much more in line with your expertise, Gershwin. We've been seeing oh. some evidence about a new uh, parapharmaceutical. Ah! But unlike most parapharmaceuticals that have some sort of specific effect, this one seems to have a whole host of wild effects, depending on the uh, the user, depending on the time of day, depending on any number of variables we can't account for. And we still haven't been able to procure a sample of it to actually test it and see what it does. We've never found a live sample out in the field, even though we've come across all sorts of paraphernalia for it. Incredible. What type well, of paraphernalia? Pill bottles, prescription, well, fake prescription forms, Amazon order receipts for it, and all signs, including the um, merchant bought from it that or the pharmaceutical was bought from the marketplace on Amazon. All signs point to Dado. Uh, what is Gershwin, Dado? Gershwin, you'd be you'd be mildly familiar with Dado. They are one of the largest parapharmacologists in the world, but oh. the drugs they produce are bizarre. The one of the one of the ones that comes to mind is uh, I think it's twenty five thirty one banana pill. It is a pill that when you take it, it produces in your stomach enough bananas to give you a lethal dose of ionizing radiation. <laughs> uh, so you would also explode. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, it destroyed a site. Damn. <laughs> Because it's, um, I think, 95 million kilograms of bananas. <laughs> God damn. It's a lot you of bananas. You take the pill, and that many bananas just manifest in your stomach. Jesus. Um, there's another one called uh, Boner Pill by Dato. What make people old and horny. And when you take it, you progressively get older and hornier. <laughs> fair until you're like the equivalent of 200 years old and are the most lustful being on the entire planet oh gross <laughs> um in one inter or yeah in one testing log um a lady took it and was like 200 years old and then just said to the testing staff just shove shove your whole leg up there whippersnapper um like that's that's what this drug does. Um, so he makes really weird stuff, and it oh, seems to, it seems to, guy. 
Yeah, Dato's a guy I'm that not makes a, I'm not a, like a corporation. No. Yeah, he's just he's just a guy that people call and ask for a kind a drug that does something, and he go and he just ships it to them because he has Amazon Prime. Um, <laughs> okay. But usually, whatever they ask for isn't what they get because his English is really bad. I have always wanted to meet that genius. Genius is not the word I would use, Gersh. <laughs> but uh, everything we've recovered points to a drug called a pill for to fix your story. Story? Yes. Spelled S-T-O-R-E-E. -E. Okay. And likewise, a new building has uh, sprung up in, over in uh, Philadelphia. A classic Dato's Laundry and Tan. We know what that means. That's usually his headquarters. If you can call it that. Oh, that's right. I guess that's something we didn't mention that was that Site 27 is like centered on Eastern it's in the middle in mid Atlantic seaboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like close to the East Coast. It's in the Jersey Pine Barrens somewhere. That is where you guys will be going. <clears throat> what neighborhood is that? Uh, let me look it up. I'm not out to Philly all that often. Oh, it's in Kensington. Ah. Oh, LMAO. <laughs> like, out of character, that could make it really good. Like, <laughs> how do you sell between the junkies and then the the Dato-E's or whatever? dato <laughs> Well, like I said, every pill bottle, everything we've recovered has been completely empty. Nothing in them. Is it drug tan laundry? Is that what it is? It's No, it's Dado's laundry and tan. Nothing about Dado's drugs. Dado's laundry. <laughs> Dado's laundry. It's also all lowercase. Oh, okay. Is it all one word? No. Okay. Is it D-A-D-O? Yes. So previously, we've sent in uh, four clandestine agents, lightly armed. And as soon as they've entered the building, we have lost contact with them. We don't know if they're still alive. And the building just cuts off communications. But they were not armed with the uh, quantum com communications you guys are. Four teams? No, four agents, not four teams. Oh. Two teams of two agents. They probably all just ended up addicted to fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> not these men. <laughs> but as far as approach, uh, you'll have your choice. <laughs> the building has... You can go in through the roof, the front lobby, the parking garage. Um, as far as we could tell, there's no receiving bays or back doors anywhere on the building. All the windows are fake. And it's approximately a three-story building. Um, what? You said all the windows are fake? So no fire escapes? Nothing like that? Um, correct. Every window is fake. We don't even know if there's a proper roof entrance. A three-story building with its own parking garage? Yes. Ah. That seems, as far as we can tell, to uh, have entry into the second floor. <clears throat> Sounds to me like there's operations going on underground. I was well, about to say the very same thing. Well, usually Dato's buildings don't make a whole lot of sense. Mm. Extra what? dimensional places? No, Not that's likely. What I was going to say. Unless it's invisible up top, that seems like a lot of space in the city for a three story building to have its own garage and to be running 
that producing that many pharmaceuticals and being capable of taking out two teams. Well, as near as we could tell, Data has always been a one-man team. He's never worked with anyone. Besides clients, of course, but he never has an actual team working with him. But that's part of why we're sending in a an, a proper MTF this time instead of just some few, a few investigatory agents. Did the agents who investigated send any data back? Uh, they sent word about the fake windows. They sent word about the lack of ulterior entrances besides the lobby. They did not actually get onto the roof, but they thought they they saw an entrance there, but they could not confirm such. The first team did go in through the lobby. The second team got in through the second floor parking garage. Hmm. Interesting. So you say this drug is given to people for what? To improve random things? It's always very difficult to tell the intent behind Dato's drugs. All we know is it seems to have a variety of different effects. Different uh, sites we've recovered the paraphernalia from. One, one, uh, one site was clearly burned in a wide-range electrical fire. At least that's the uh, basic description. It looks like the place was struck from lightning by lightning from the inside. Um, another place was dissolved almost entirely in acid. All the uh, the heat rock and half of the studs in in the walls in that location were worn away by a very strong acid. Um, another mm. building, the that entire floor was just kind of, uh, what's the word? Demanifested. Interesting. So possibly super enhancing drugs. So it is. This, like, advertise? Like, I, I mean, if we know, I mean, I, you said Gersh is kind of familiar with him. Does he like, how, how are people, how do people know to order this? this so usually whenever, that? Usually Dato will put up a, he'll do one of two things. He'll either put up a billboard that just says Dato Laundry and Tan and a phone number with no description of anything. <laughs> or he'll put up some kind of ad online, you know, a sidebar ad, whatever, that will basically say the same thing. Um, sometimes either ad will have the additional tagline of whatever you need. And that's as far as his uh that's as far as his uh advertisement goes. It's usually more word of mouth. Ah, and where are these buildings that have been destroyed and vanished? So far it's mostly isolated to Kensington. Huh. Interesting. So it seems like it's mostly a very private client based business, but clearly regular people are taking advantage of it maybe to to get high who knows why is he in kensington and why, why is are they why <laughs> is he shipping through amazon to the, the surrounding three blocks dado does not like to deliver anything personally hmm. as far as we can tell like you know he's very proud of his amazon prime subscription Well, this is a mystery I need to crack for sure. This is very weird. Dato has eluded the foundation for far too long. Any information your team can bring in will be valuable, especially if it leads to his apprehension, finally. I would love to have this man. I just, it just kills me, man. Um, <laughs> just I, listen. I can't, I, for some reason, I have a real difficult time with German accent. 
I don't know why. I I, I do other <laughs> ones and they they pretty much stay consistent at least. I don't know how accurate they are, but this one wanders all over the fucking place. <laughs> Bro, I, I've had I've had NPCs go from British to Scottish to to Irish to <laughs> to Russian all in like three sentences. So like, <laughs> yeah. That's why I gave my character a voxy voice instead of trying to do that. Yeah, but like it I kills suck. me to just do like no voice at all because then I don't get to differentiate between when I'm making an above table comment. Like yeah. Because, um. Okay, I mean, yeah, Gersh just, can't wait. Gersh would love to get this guy, you know, in a lab in the foundation. Listen, just wait until I have to do Dato's voice. <laughs> it's gonna be so hard. <laughs> well, um, Gersh, you should take your team down to the armory, get them situated. Indeed. Um, you're clear to leave whenever you're ready. Oh yay! And... My first mission. Graham, and, uh... I assume, is our. Uh, yes, I'm. I Graham will be your communications officer still. I'm. He'll uh, he'll check in once you're ready to leave. All right. So before you're ready to leave, just report back here, and he'll be waiting. <clears throat> All right. Let's get you geared out. This way. And Dim <laughs> Dimitri's just going to leave his plate and then walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Werner's going to look at it and walk away. Yeah, they got people for that, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Gersh leads the way down to the armory. Yep. It's a, it's uh, a, it's a, it's a brief explanation to the new team, team members, like how things generally work here. Yeah, you know, at the armory, there's two clerks that you'll talk to, like the the you know the uh, the firearm and weapons clerk and the armor clerk, armor and and gear and equipment clerk. Like, so you'll just talk to both of them about what you guys might need. But as you guys walk out, um, you do pass uh, the personnel manager for Site 22. He's at a desk, just sitting there, filing out his paperwork. Um, he's a very kind of sad-looking, frumpy individual. He's got a little Hatsune Miku figure on the back of his desk somewhere, because one of the other players made me put it there. <laughs> You guys can talk to him if you want, or just walk by. He won't uh, stop what's you. His name? Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Kirsch just gives him a Jeff. Gershwin. Trying to be part of the team. Uh, Bettany uh, gives a curtsy. Jeff. New lady. <laughs> Just giggles and follows the rest of the guys. Hey, Jeff, how's it going? Living the dream. <laughs> Keep dreaming, buddy. <sighs> he just sighs. No one knows why he's so sad. Damn. Because nobody asked. No. <laughs> That's why he's so sad. Nobody ever asks. Nobody ever asks. <laughs> Fuck this guy, man, and his sadness. Uh, guys, why does he seem so sad? Is he always like this? Always. It's a mystery, though. Oh. Uh, I get it. He just don't like to talk about it, huh? I wouldn't know. <laughs> wouldn't know. Never ask. Oh. Well, we're busy now, but I'll ask him on when we get back, I think. 
If you insist. Yeah, yeah, do that. I'd love to know what you find out. <laughs> and in a Morgan Freeman voice, but she never asked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh damn! Perhaps All right, so see. Needs spiritual counsel. Oh god. Does uh, does Makarov have any like visible crosses hanging from his armor anywhere? Oh yeah. Oh, I was just gonna ask. Okay. Oh yeah, he is a devout follower of the Christian God <laughs> of the Emperor. I mean, the Christian God. Yeah. Hey, talk to him that one time. He did. But, uh, yeah, it's not too long before you guys get down to the armory. You walk in, and it is a fairly large... It's, it's almost like a hangar. There's a few central tables in the middle and that go down the length of it. It's probably like a 40 by 40 room. By 40. <laughs> 40 foot tall ceiling. Yeah. Huge place. It's a cube. Yep, big fucking cube. It's the cube. We're all gonna die. <laughs> but, like, the uh, the central tables are set up for, you know, individual assembly of gear. Um, so you can collect a bunch of stuff, put it in one spot, and then it, get it set on your person as you see, as you see fit. You've got some room to do all that. Um, but down the right side of the room is uh, kind of the the armor clerk desk. Like there's a there's a long desk and there's a guy behind it. He's moving, you know, sets of gear around, tactical suits, all sorts of stuff. And then on the left side, there's a, there's the same kind of desk, but that guy behind that desk is moving all sorts of firearms around, polishing a gun. He's you know he's doing a whole bunch of different stuff, but. So you guys can go to either one of them that you want to. Um, Thirst is going to give uh, <clears throat> the the new guys a little bit of a rundown. He's just going to say, <clears throat> as far as tactics go, uh, <clears throat> uh, step one, I'm a medic. But uh, in addition to that, I've got this, got the trusty submachine gun here. Does uh, type of sonic damage and uh and the shield de de deploys mobily it's a, it's an energy barrier so you can crouch behind it if it's out <clears throat> gives a little bit of cover i have some i have a bunch of different tricks on my stream you don't need to hear all the information but for now <coughs> sonic damage energy barrier Daily, tell them a little bit about what you do. Daily freezes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry, I didn't hear you. What did you say? Gersh uh, told them just like one or two things about uh, the way he he uh, acts in combat with the with the energy shield and the machine gun. Um, and and he asked daily to to do the same just so they can get an idea of like maybe how to balance or whatever. Well, basically, I'm like support artillery and such. I'd like to figure out ways to use our environment and our resources that might become available in strained situations to aid our situation. I can build things and craft things pretty quickly. And I have my my little infantry if we really need help. And that ray gun. Yes, and that ray gun. But the rat army is more important. <laughs> what is Daily? this yes, it infantry? Is. Does Daily pull out the phone? <laughs> She taps it in her pocket. Hey, 
Yeah, so Daly just taps the phone in her pocket in response to your question. <laughs> Dimitri will nod. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Listen, this is weirder shit. Okay, well, you, uh, Marikov, Bentney, you can describe what you guys do, if you want. I cleanse things with God's righteous fire. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> and on brand. Fuel, I have this. Uh, and he'll just reach in towards his back and then pull out this. It's like a, like a sledgehammer with a pick on one side. And then it's like got like a lever action on the bottom for like, you know. Like a crowbar. Yeah, it's like a demolition multi-tool. Yeah. So <laughs> I can get into places that we can't otherwise get into. Or I can crush things. <laughs> the armor has many different functions, depending on what we require. This is going to be good. <clears throat> sort of an all-terrain vehicle, then. Of sorts. The unit I came from was less containment and more purging. Foundation it, uh, outfit? No. Didn't think so. God willed that I be here, so I am here. Yeah, here we protect things, secure them. Some things can't be cured and only be cleansed. We're bringing Dato back alive. That is the primary objective, yes. What about you, Bethany? Oh, little old me? No, stop. I said stop. I'm not gonna... Fine, show him, I guess. Uh, you watch as just every pour just pours out ooze to make a... Or sorry, uh, I, I skipped forward. Uh, first, she kind of like um, just... Pulls her dress off, but she's got like a uh, kind of like a StarCraft ghost style skin suit underneath. And uh, she says, all right, fine. Hop out, I guess. And you just watch as like uh, like every pore that you can see pours out ooze and it just covers her whole body. She grows from like uh, uh, like a five foot eight female to like a uh, what I put. I think it was. Oh yeah, about a six nine ooze like creature. Um still looks humanoid. And a massive claw elongates from her one hand. And she just kinda like just scrapes the wall. And it just leaves a massive like um dent and slice in the wall. And then she she shifts back to her normal form and she goes, And just in case that don't work out. Well, I'm gonna take me one of these. And she walks over to the area with the guns and she like uh she does her whole yeah. lock and load with like uh uh like maybe a MP five K that's sitting around if they got one. Sure. That'd be one of those. But as you walk over, the guy behind the desk, you he he's already on the phone and he's just reporting minor damage to the wall in the armory. Oh, it's fine. Don't need to worry about that. Well, it does need to be fixed. Ah, you know, buff right out. Well, sure it will, but I'm not the, uh, I'm not the mason. <laughs> He's not a buffer. <laughs> Gunsmith. Oh, oh no. The name's Argus. What can I do for you? I require a sidearm sized for me. As for you, hmm. Well, 
I don't have any elephant guns. But let's see what I do. Have. One like quiet. <laughs> pulls, pulls out a Desert e Eagle XL. <laughs> and Gers Gers says, "Give him one like quiet," and he and he pats the fucking massive revolver on his pelt. And he looks at that. Well, are you a revolver man or do you like clips? I like reliability and ease like of I use. Said. Fair enough. He puts down the uh, like the semi deconstructed rifle he's been working on. He moves back, looks, go, kind of goes behind like a little half wall, crouches down, comes back with just like the biggest fucking revolver you've ever seen. We will take it from him, and he will give it the rundown. All right. It's a six-shot revolver. Um, takes big old fucking bullets. Um, and you get 36 rounds. Perfect. This will well, do. You get, you get 36 regular rounds, and you get 12 armor piercing. Oh, okay. So note that okay. down. Um, is, there, is there any other special ammo you'd require? I think I have uh, I have your dossier here. Um, I've got your I've got some of your spare flamethrower fuel, and he brings up this little uh, this, like basically like a little milk crate, and it's got um, an additional like we'll say fifteen flamethrower charges. Very good. And we'll say that. Um, Originally, you had like what five, ten, something like that. Okay. So you can add those. Fair enough. Okay. And what did Bettany want? Like a uh, little submachine gun? Yeah, yeah, something like rather compact. Okay. Yeah, so a submachine gun, the way it'll work, it'll do, uh, how does how does Gersh's work? I think uh, it's one d six plus the upgraded uh, ammo, right? Dex. So I think well, originally I have, it was a d four. Yes. Oh right, okay, yeah, it was d four, but it fires three shots per burst, so it's a d four plus uh, whatever the bonus is, Dex plus d and d four plus Dex and d four plus Dex each every every attack action. Yeah, so when you fire it, it'll fire it'll use that many shots or it'll use your proficiency bonus amount of shots amount of bullets basically oh right okay, oh, okay. um and each of those bullets will do like a d4 plus your plus your stat but it'll only do that once per round so if you have extra attack and you use it with it the second shot will only do a single d4 oh okay, okay. Like... well you're a cleric so you only get one attack it was versatile that's why. Oh, okay. What's yeah, no, I know I want to attack. I was talking about the the damage bonus. Oh, the okay. Bonus. Uh, what'd you say, Chief? What's the damage on that pistol? On or a pistol? Uh, sorry. I think it's it's what? Like a, D, a, a D10, D10 probably? Yeah. Okay. yeah it's a... uh, and what's the range on it? Uh, 60 uh... to 40. Okay. Rad. Uh, I'm how putting much... it in, so... How much ammo uh, in a mag? Reload, reload is four. And uh, misfire is one, so you have to crit fail the misfire. Okay. I can put it up in the chat. Probably be easy. It's just the I'm just using the Exandria, I think. If you have that. Oh yeah. Uh Yeah, and then the submachine gun is uh the range is what? 60 120. So it's got a smaller long well, range. 30 120 I think. No, cuz that's like in D&D Beyond that's just like the short bow as a base, I think. Oh, should I ch okay, should I I should change my range then? 
Yeah. If okay. you look in the if you look in the description, it's uh, clip size oh. of eighteen. Reloading yeah, take yeah. Okay. Clip size of eighteen. Reloading takes one attack. Range is sixty one twenty. So it's got a yeah. Reload eight or eighteen. Misfire is seven minus proficiency bonus. That might be unnecessarily complicated, <laughs> but. Well, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so, the, so the misfire is uh, like three right now. I'm gonna assume that Betney is four. using Dex as a as a main stat. Anyway, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because because mm -hmm. I I Gersh is using strength for that, so it, it's it is versatile, but uh, you shouldn't have to worry. About it. Yeah. Well, it's not versatile. It's finesse. Like I oh, treat finesse. all I treat all firearms as finesse in this game because otherwise it would almost nobody would pick strength. Yeah. If they couldn't use guns with strength. Pure, she, purely a balancing thing. She might take two MP5Ks then. Just to be a baller. <laughs> okay. Well, you can't reload with no hands. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have two weapon fighting, so... <laughs> I mean, the she just wants is... to try to be a baller and say she was going to succeed. All right. Oh, okay. No, that's totally fair. You can take inspiration. I mean, <laughs> just <laughs> just remember is, when, is when you're going through and you're unloading your MP5s, you don't yell, don't yell out Kobe. Yell out Cobain because Cobain didn't miss any of his shots. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, reload on the on the submachine gun is 18 anyway. So that's six rounds of firing. So if you have two, it's 12 rounds of firing. If you're firing for more than 12 rounds. We're in deep shit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Reloading might not be the issue. Then. Yeah, that's true. Do they have um, straps so... on them, by the way? Like, uh, like sling yeah, you them? Can... yeah, you can get some straps. Cool. I'll get a couple slings for that. Yeah, so just because you picked a second gun doesn't mean you get extra ammo. Oh, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Um, so you get three regular clips and two armor-piercing clips. Okay. And for like a simple explanation, armor piercing is like the same as like a magic weapon, basically. For like overcoming resistance and stuff. Sounds good. Some some monsters may have resistance to like ranged damage. Yeah, it's more uh, you know, break glass and kind of emergency anyways. Mm-hmm. All right, well, anything uh, else you guys need? Gersh, daily? A reliable combat knife. I broke mine. Uh, uh, sure, I'll get the biggest one I've got. And he just comes out with this fucking 12-inch Bowie knife. Beautiful. Bowie knife. Hands it to you. It's got a pretty, pretty simple construction. It's just, it's basically just a K bar, Fair. but big. Okay. Like, just, a, like a gladius size K bar, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> it's a short sword. Um, you said it was. Mm, where's the, the link to the weapon stuff? Oh, it's in the Discord. It's in the, uh, character guidelines. Right. Character. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah. Gear upgrade system. Yeah. So yeah. if you wanted to try to do that right now, you guys could. If you want to spend like the rest of the session figuring out your gear upgrades. Actually, I think I might be out of money anyway. I think I might actually. Oh no. Yeah. I'm, I'm down to like a thousand anyway. Yeah. Because I think, I, think you, I actually use... did some of this after. Yeah. It's in your. Uh... Yeah. All right. Yeah, because you spent like three k. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Because that makes sense. Because Dale, I know Daily has four k right now. Okay. Um. Yeah. No. I no. I was actually gonna look for um ammo, uh, different different ammo type. That's okay. Was... Um. So. 
Yeah, I'm gonna get a. I'm gonna spend three hundred on a clip of psychic submachine gun rounds. Sure. Yeah, so uh, Bettany, uh, Makarov, you guys do have uh, 4K worth of gold to spend if you do want to buy some extra shit. Oh, it's four? Right I thought it was three. Yeah, I thought it was four, uh, three as well, but apparently it was four. <laughs> oh. I gave them that money a year and a half ago, so. <laughs> Fair. Um... So you can look through it now if you want. You don't have to. But if you just want some like extra clips or like weird damage type, like you know, you could get some weird damage type fuel cells for your flamethrower. Fair. Let's do some fucking necrotic fire damage. Yeah. <laughs> um. Ah, uh, yeah, I I got some ideas already. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm going to throw on a sight on each, so that is uh, just a simple red dot, so it looks like that is, what, 300 a piece? Yeah, improved accuracy sighting, yep. And I want... I want to improve them clip sizes. Go big or go home. Okay, so how much do you want to improve them? As much as I can, which looks to be 50%. Okay, so you can go from 18 to 27, so that'll be 600 gold for each one. All right. Um, I think I'll do... I think two should be good. Just the two guns? Yeah, yeah. J just do, like, um, one, one like, large clip for each gun. Okay. That'll be my first load, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can't help myself. All right, so that's 300, 300, and then 600, 600. Yeah, so negative 1,800 from what I had. I'll, I'll, uh, that's all I'm going to do. Okay. Got any acid canisters? Yeah, you can get that. Yeah. It'll be, like, it'll be 200 for, uh, we'll say, five of them. I'll bet. I'll take a thousand worth then. Okay, so that's I got that. Yeah, you can. Uh, <laughs> so spend a thousand gold, and you can get uh, what five, twenty-five acid fuel canisters. Yeah, you know. How many shots is a fuel canister? For that? One. One. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm giving him five. But it is my primary weapon, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to run out if I, you know. No, I heard. I was just wondering about yeah. like how uh, reloading and stuff. Yeah, I just basically, you know, I have to pop a new canister every time, I believe. Um, um, yeah, you don't really need to reload them. They're just kind of integrated into your armor. Yeah, it just automatically like spits out the can and then pops yeah. a new one in once cool. it's empty. Yeah. It'll be it will be like some kind of action economy to change to a different one though. That's fair. I'd like I I'd, I'd be cool with that like either okay. being an action or a bonus action. Yeah. You know, because like would I physically have to switch modes yeah. kind of thing. I think I think it'll take one of your attacks. Okay. I can fuck with that. Yeah, we'll say that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I'm down with that. Right. Mm. Anything else? No. Nope. Dimitri's armors. just <laughs> Dimitri's just gonna bless his weaponry and pick out the mods he's taken with him. Or well, okay. sorry, not <laughs> taking with him, but Yeah, he's activating. Yeah. Is there um oh no, I guess that would be covered in general item prices. Cause like I don't even know if there's an art. Is there an artificer like type of spell focus? Uh, yeah, tools. Do they have one? <laughs> oh, that's the tool. Oh, okay, so all right, she already has one. All right, cool. 
Yeah, artificer spellcasting focus are <laughs> a sewing kit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Or whatever the fuck they want. Here's here's my like fucking electrician's tools. Sure. Anyway, here's fireball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I think I'll get a uh, a little upgrade but, to my armor, uh, a plus one AC and a uh, fire resist. That's another six fifty. Okay, so the that plus one armor won't apply while your symbiote is out because oh, that, you'll that's be using a, a different armor formula, but the fire resistance still will. Okay, I'm with it. Yeah, you know what? I'll do similar. I'll, I'll get a plus one, get them to weld on some extra plating or whatever. Right. They you know? come out, yeah, they come out with a big <laughs> dish-sized piece of tin and they just weld it on the front. Yeah. And then the armor <laughs> in, integrates it on its own afterwards. Yeah. Like, they know, like, actually, they don't even weld it. They just come out with, like, a rivet gun and they just staple it on, like, yeah. three rivets. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they know the armor is going to take care of the rest. Yeah. Just disseminate it. Give me a plus one. Sure. How much is just the plus one without the the extra resist? I think it's three hundred. Okay. Red. Just to just to even it out. Just a solid twenty. Cool. All right. Anything else you guys want to do? <clears throat> No. I think we're set. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys can return to the meeting room as soon as you're ready. Uh, Graham will be waiting for you. All right. I'm solid. I'll head back. Yeah. I'll head back. Yeah. Out of the squad and head back. Yeah. All right. Yes, yeah, so you guys make your way back in the same way you came. You pass by Jeff again. Jeff. Gersh. Hertzies. Jeff. New lady. And you do realize he's the personnel manager, so he should know everybody's name. <laughs> I'm too polite to say anything right now. That's fair. You're also too polite to ask him how he feels. <laughs> so you guys get back to the meeting room. <laughs> <laughs> and a Morgan Freeman voice in the background called it. <laughs> so you get back to the meeting room, and uh, at the farther end of the table, uh, you see a probably like late 20s early 30s guy um south american descent he, he's setting up some kind of uh for lack of a better term futuristic looking like fucking device like you know all those fancy routers with the, like the 12 arms and spikes on them okay it kind of looks like that Oh. Is this the quantum communication device, or is this something else? Yeah. No, it's the same thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Gersh and uh, Daly have seen it before, but Betany and uh, Marikov have not. Strange ah. piece of equipment. Ah, good. You're back. Uh, and I assume you two are the two new members. Um, how are you doing? My name's Edward Graham, your communications officer. I'll be coordinating the communication between the site and between all four of you. So you can communicate seamlessly when you're out in the field, even if you're separated. Oh, how nice to meet you. She just, like, kind of steps forward and, like, uh, goes to shake his hand. Yeah, he he accepts the handshake. It's not the best handshake you've ever gotten. Oh my, that was a little limp. Would, would you like to try that again? Uh, sh sure. And he just he just does it the same. He's like he's not really sure what you're. 
<sighs> I, I, I have to get the device set back up. Um, anyway, here. And he hands each of you, like, a little earpiece. So once you get out of the sight, um, you'll activate these and put them in your ear. Because the the quantum communication only runs for can only run for a day or two. Can't just run perpetually before you need a new device. Yeah, stick it in my ear. Gersh pulls out a flask and just takes several twigs. Packing back in the bag. Yep. Uh, Dimitri, Bettany, you see uh, your new team member just drinking on the job. It's not unusual. Yeah, daily, know. daily, nor uh, nor Graham seem to bat an eye at this. Uh, excuse me. You gonna share? Ah. My mistake. So rude. Uh, what would you like? Uppers? Downers? Psychedelics? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't thought that was a nip of whiskey. Ah, uh, don't worry about that. You know what? I think I'm good. Thank you anyway. You sure? I got angel dust. It does. It's real. My own formula. It's made with real angel. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, Bethany, you're not actually sure how a variety of drugs might interact with uh, Hendrix's system. Yeah. So that's probably a wise choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you do suddenly get a memory or two from Hendrick of it's just like a few like quick glimpses, but it looks like the wildest orgy slash drug party you've ever seen. Damn it, Hendrick, what what is Lots this? Of, and and it's in from as near as you can tell, it's like a very large stone ballroom, intricate marble all over the place, but most of the angles don't make a whole lot of sense. Like in one of the one of the glimpses, like you track a wall all the way up and it splits at a point and your perception kind of wants to go both ways at the same time. It's not comfortable to think about. She, you guys see her like kind of like squint a little bit and put one hand to her to her head. Uh, my Henrik, you you sure get around it. What is with that building? Uh, ow! And she just looks like she's got a headache all of a sudden. Director Warner, he's in the room, right? We're in his uh, office. No, you're in the meeting room, but he is still there. He's, but oh, he's not okay. at the main table anymore. He's kind of back at a desk. He's uh, filling out some paperwork at a com at a computer terminal. Uh, Gersh, what do you need? <clears throat> what was the comparative length of, of time between when the uh, each team lost contact after entering the building? Uh, let me look here. The first team was three seconds. The second team was fifteen seconds. Well, first team went in through the lobby, second team through the gar parking garage. I suggest we take the roof. Makarov, what do you think? The roof seems like the best point, although I imagine that it's probably not going to be much different than what the other teams in... Uh, what was the word? I was, fuck. God damn it. Uh, the other teams encountered, regardless yeah, of our entrance. You can get us up there. Uh, 
Daily. I am worried about. I am worried about the the roof entrance. I was thinking the best way to get in would be to act like we're there as clients, or at least someone. And she kind of shoots eyes at Bethany. Hmm. <clears throat> well, I know from what we know, Jado's uh, clients are order orders drugs online. But you think maybe just pose as someone trying to wander in off the street? Not wander in. Someone who's maybe ordered before and, you know, is coming to ask for some bespoke pharmaceutical or, I don't know, perhaps to to commission something. Werner, did they, uh, did the team that entered through the lobby, did they have, did they just walk in the door or did they have to breach? Uh, I believe they just walked in. It was unlocked. But it was during, quote, normal business hours as well. What time is our insertion? Uh, well, it's currently 9 a.m., so you can get there within about an hour from here. I don't know, Daly. This seems like it's been tried before. I mean, a whole team walking in the door isn't really the same thing. But You want to split us up? That might be the better route. I mean, at least if we send someone in, they might find out some facts, and then the before the rest of us get caught. Do have the quantum communication? Yes, it is. It is suspected that we lost communications with the agents, not due to them being uh, terminated upon entry. It was probably more of a communication jam. Well, I just, it's my first time out, so I, I'm just here to do what I'm told. You need me to go in, I'll go in. Sorry, I turned into an old lady there. See, it happens, bro. <laughs> Very well. Bettany and myself with uh, Daly and Makarov as the uh, backup breach crew. All right, you guys want to go breach the roof? Is that how you want to do it? I was about to yeah. ask, where yeah, are we breaching? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. You I can mean, imagine this is kind of Daly's plan here. So, I, yeah, you could try I don't to breach the we roof. We want to separate you by could. two floors, but. Hmm. I imagine we're going to encounter the same sort of uh, obstacles that the other teams will when we enter, regardless of where we enter. And especially if there's like weird, um, like spatial weird architecture. Yeah, yeah. We, we three two floors apart might be really far apart. Yeah, it could end up being like you know, there's ten floors in there. You know, or yeah. or it, you know, we could be dealing with like a an endless fucking hallway type situation, you know. Right. Yeah. But if we're trying to find out information, arguably, it would be best to split it up. I mean, or if we have any idea where like this dude's office is, because assumably that's where you know he would take the client. That could help inform some things. Do we have any recon on this building at all? Not on the interior. Inside. Yeah, no oh. windows. And then, like, also, like, like I said before, it seems like he's not taking people off the street as clients. Like, he advertises, he puts up billboards, and people order online. Yes. He doesn't like people coming in. If we were going to use that <laughs> as a cover, we'd need some pretty extensive intel. It doesn't really make sense that he doesn't like people coming in. There's a parking garage and the door's unlocked. It's in Kensington. That makes no fucking sense. Yeah, it is I mean, very it could, strange. It could be a cover. It is. It there is super are... weird. Like, why is he like? Why did he pick this building in Kensington and then like not let people wander in off the street? 
Well, who says? Nobody has says that he didn't let people come in off the street. It That's just true. says that he also sends through Amazon. He just okay, I mean, have we, has there there been, like, has the building been watched? Has have we like have has any have any agents like observed people walking in and out of the lobby? Yeah, there's definitely been that. There's people that okay. have walked in and out. The same people. Okay, so people are walking in and out. Mm -hmm. There have been cases where, you know, a person walks in and then 15 minutes later that person walks out. But there's been all there's also been cases of somebody walks in and then. A week later, they walk out. Mm. So, some See, this is perfect. He's clearly taking clients. I'm still of a mind to stick together. You're still of a mind to get caught, Gersh. Look at you. We're catching him. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is a task force. We're in. We're going in. We're going to secure a sample of the drug and capture Dato if possible. Communications officer. Uh yes. Yeah. Is there any way you can track our comm links? I can. Uh, I can track your location in relation to each other. More or less. And I can use that to get a general geolocation, but it's not super precise. Fair enough. <laughs> what, you think I'm too square to go in there with with Benny Daly? I think you have a crazy arm that will get you spotted in about a millisecond. Also, you guys have all your fucking gear, your tactical suits, your StarCraft yeah. ghost suits. Yeah, You've but like, a, are, are we going to do... A giant fucking robot that's walking <laughs> around. Yeah, I mean, right. that's what, like, there's no way Makarov can go in as yeah. like, undercover. There's no, no way. Exactly. No way. I think we just send Beth... I think we send Bethany. She's the, she, she's so, the only yeah. one that looks no, normal. No, I think we got to stay two and two at least. I don't, I, I don't see think why. we should think... have any one person by themselves. It's a fact-finding mission. You need somebody to get close to this guy. It's not a fact-finding mission. We're we're yeah, in there. Yeah. We're trying to we're trying to secure a sample of the thing and and apprehend the dude. Yeah, no, exact. But the, if possible, everybody else just disappeared. Like, we need somebody right. who can at least get some information here, so then we can help the rest of us do what we need to do. And that means we need someone to get close. We can't have somebody, we can't just have people storming the lobby. That clearly didn't work. Like, we can't just have, you know, people running around everywhere. That's not going to work. Like, so we need somebody who's going to be led up to this guy or to some sort of, like, drug supply or intake process. So then at least we can find out from there the best mode of operating. I mean, this is a classic, like, character characters with conflicting priorities like gersh is trying to keep everyone safe he's mm -hmm. like willing to throw bethany bethany's life away for for some intel personally okay. <laughs> like, bethany's, bethany's gonna be fine that's my point bethany's gonna be fine she's the only one that's gonna be fine if if they just go in there because she's the only one that looks like a regular person i do like, still have my well, dress Daly's not that far off. Just like a lab coat person. Yeah, I was gonna right. say you're probably the best bet. You're, I mean, maybe I'm also you're like brainy. four feet tall. Maybe you're short, so <laughs> you have dwarfism. But that, regardless, you with your intelligence and know-how could pose as an interested party. Yeah, just go in and ask for a drug. I'm happy would, to like, do you that. Make a good Possibly point about would want. Prosthetic. Yeah, go in so, and ask for a drug that'll make you, you tall. <clears throat> okay, yeah. sounds maybe, good to me. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe, or maybe right, somebody cool. who's interested in just working with this individual. They're enigmatic and intelligent, and they've eluded a capture for, you Ooh. know, how Ooh. long? Years. I mean, you know, you would have the know-how and the That's lingo true. to do that. And you would be more apt to get, well, you'd be more likely to get close to her than, than Bettany. 
would no offense i don't i mean okay if we want to get close to him well we need to apprehend him right build a rapport you know he is obviously a very skittish and uh timid well not timid but cautious individual Right. He's not just going to let anybody. He probably deals through a liaison because, at its core, this is a drug operation. But very it's also rarely, a one-man operation. very rarely does the actual individual come out and deal with them themselves. It's probably why he uses Amazon. It's a middleman, quote unquote. He doesn't right. actually That's have why to. I thought that she might have a chance because she's the pretty girl. I'm like the little troll freak. So I, I imagine. <laughs> This individual would probably appreciate intelligence over beauty. Yeah, I think that's good. Like two different av- two like different avenues of like undercover approach. So you have mm. you have your your honey pot and your uh, intellectual curiosity mm. avenue. Yeah, you so guys you could definitely send do us that. both. Yeah, maybe like maybe like one minute. You know, one minute apart. You just. You or you would just walk in almost at the same time, just but just coming approaching the building from different directions on the street. Mm. Okay. Acting like you don't know each other. That's a good idea. That might also be a little weird, but I don't think he would be in the position to be like paying attention to that. So okay. Well it depends on if how, how often people are walking in and out. Clearly, if, if it's, I'm if telling it's you, clearly people time. are walking in and out. If the door is unlocked, there's a parking garage that's in the middle of Kensington. There's people in and out of that building. Well, then <laughs> it shouldn't be weird for two people to come from different directions at roughly the same time. All right. Then. And Makarov and Gersh are going to breach the roof in uh, about five minutes if, you, <laughs> if, we, if we lose any kind of contact. Yeah, well, what happened to the roof sideways. not being a good idea? Yeah. Well, I mean, either way, it's I think it's uh, breaching at a disc like from one of the other entry points is is going to be a shit show regardless. We're either going to like we're going to hit this spatial whatever, you know, inside this building and we're we don't know where we're going to end up and if we're even going to be able to cross Mm -hmm. paths. You know, so you but think we can't. Makarov and Gersh go wait to go in right behind in the same door if there's any kind of, you know, issue. I mean, that yeah. might not be helpful anyway, because then, because assumably we'll both be like spirited to different places. So, so mm, I mean, possibly. regardless of how you slice it, we don't know. We're walking into an area where we have absolutely no intel on. We don't know what the layout is. We don't know what kind of effects we're dealing with besides the, you know, bare bones details we've gotten from prior reports. So we're going in blind regardless, you know. Right. So communication I mean, is going to be key here, really. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, you got to keep in touch and, and, like, report any and all information when you walk in yeah. the door. This is why right. I asked if the communications officer could track our location on a more finite level. Because right. if he could, then once we're inside... You know, we, he might be able and to. What's the what's the volume requirement for communicating with the the quantum devices here? Um, you can do a whisper. You can okay. So it's like not even a stealth roll necessarily. Okay, all right, cool. I guess that's the plan. All right, you guys have talked enough. Uh... Enough tactics. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry. sorry. I don't think I caught that at all. Could y'all go over that one more time? <laughs> she just kind of smirks. You two We're... are going to go in from the front at opposite, from opposite directions, in and around the same time. Uh, oh, dear. I, I, I got it. it. You don't understand humor, do you? Yeah, uh, Werner actually hands you a transcript of that entire conversation. Says <laughs> <laughs> it's the accent. <clears throat> All right, with, uh, without Richter, Richter, how are we getting there? We're renting a car? Well, we still have uh, Richter's teleportation technology. Um... He's given us a key to uh, to use it for now. Like we still have the temporary way, but we have. Uh... He gave us a temporary key to it, 
So we're going to teleport you about, uh, or we'll open a way to about, I believe we can get you within a block. Sounds good. Somewhere uh, out of sight. Yes, it'll be a back alley. <laughs> Everybody ready? Oh, just just one moment. Uh, Bethany uh, kind of just walks over and picks up her dress and puts it back on leotards just to, you know, try and cover her suit so it's not as obvious. Okay. Okay, I'm ready now. So the dress is what was actually armor, like got the plus one AC to it? No, no, that, she, it's that's basically that's the, the skin armor? suit. Okay, it's the skin suit. That's yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. You got the, the skin suit, and then uh, she had the skin <laughs> suit was... on underneath the dress the whole time, but, you know, to try it. She didn't want to ruin the dress when, you know, she, she morphed out, so. Okay. Cool. I require a caffeine supplement before we leave. Werner points to the coffee bar. <laughs> ah, don't bother with caffeine. Here you go. And uh, a, a little drone zips out from Gersh's hand and uh, just injects a, a little bit of meth into, uh, <laughs> into Makarov's med port. <laughs> just some medical dosages worth. Yeah. It is zesty. <laughs> is that pineapple I taste? No, it tastes of aluminum. Oh, done. Yeah, it comes in three flavors. Aluminum, brass, and zinc. Oh, God. Because, <laughs> you know. You gotta have options, man. Yeah. Gotta have options. But All no, right. that, that was me segueing to actually going and getting a coffee. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I want a coffee. All right. Well, uh, I'm all, I'm all set up, so you guys can get going whenever. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we go, but I think we're waiting for Chief, I guess, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I finally have my cheat sheet set up. Everything's in my sheet now. It's taken me this entire time to actually be ready. <laughs> I don't know. I think I have everything on my sheet. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> Like and if not, it's not names. super difficult to reference. Yeah. And like, I know Daly's still missing a couple things from her sheet, but uh, it's it should be few enough things that it's like, oh, if it comes up. Um, yeah. Why? Lauren, I still suggest like referencing your D&D Beyond sheet, at least. I don't know if you I don't know if you're going to roll or not. No. Yeah, no, dude. I was about to ask if there was a map up on roll twenty for this because I've just been using the D and Beyond. Because uh, there's no map yet. Okay, yeah, because it, it's between the Discord and something else. Like it's easiest to use that. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's you're fine, right. Yeah. You're not at the computer at the. Moment. But the thing is that, like, if um, if Steve ends up making like attack rolls against us, those will show up in the roll twenty chat, which is why that's. Another one of the reasons why that's useful. Yeah, right now I don't have any stat blocks built. Where? Um, I have stat blocks, but they're not in roll twenty. So what I'm hearing oh, okay. is that we should start a fight as soon as we get in there. Oh, you totally can. <laughs> Going guns blazing. <laughs> no, I'll just be rolling physical dice. Oh, well, easy enough. Yeah, to... see, that's what I Go figured in. that he would call it like always. So. Yeah. I don't think it's that big of an adjustment. <clears throat> but when you get the chance while we're playing, you should uh, you should try to, like, explore World 20. Cause it took me, like, it literally took me maybe a year and a half to, like, fully adapt. Right, and this idiot expects me to learn it in two minutes. <laughs> it took me a year and a half, but, you know, you, you, should, you, should, you should be able to do it. Excuse me, I set it all up for you, please. <laughs> the, the the basics are easy to learn inside of five minutes. Um, the, yeah, it's the di yeah. more difficult, more like like the DM side can be a little more difficult when you deal with macros and 
Yeah, I have no so idea what the fuck shit. I'm doing. How do you turn off the macros? Because whenever I'm in the fucking uh, Night Circus game, I have like three or four macros on the screen now that won't go away. I don't know. I don't know how I I don't know how they got there, but they're there. They live on the screen. All right. So map. if you go into macros, um, once it once it have a button it's next to them that says show, means that you have not shown them yet. But if you go down, eventually you're gonna see one a button that says hide, which means that is one of the ones you've got up on your screen. So you just hit hide and it goes away. How do you open macros? Um, so at the top on the, uh, the, the right side toolbar where you've got like your chat, your journal, uh, you should have one that looks like three dice stacked in a triangle. Okay. That's your macros, Sorry, your decks on, and all that. The and then uh, when, when you go down the list, you should eventually see one that uh, has a button that says hide instead of new or instead of show. All right, I got this game opening up now. Three dice. Oh, this is where I, you can easily make a rollable table. Okay, yes. Okay, so maybe if I just uncheck... No. They all... Okay, they're showing up as little... Okay, these are the cards. Yeah, okay, maybe these aren't macros then. Yeah, because because oh, if, if you can take a picture and show you, yeah, let me see. Um, I'm gonna put it in the site twenty seven message. It's these purple things at the bottom of the screen. Okay, wait. I can turn them off if I. They're apparently on the macro quick bar, which I never created. But if I if I hit don't show macro quick bar, it does get rid of that. Yeah, so, there you go. Cool. But but how do they get there? <laughs> so a lot of times, what that is is you might have accidentally clicked on like let's say, let's say you're clicked on. Sheet? Yeah, you're clicked in a sheet and you accidentally uh, click and drag like say dexterity save. And when you drag it out to the to the thing, it'll stay there. Ah, uh, okay. It 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 can be pretty useful to use yeah, if uh, you've got like you know you're, you're running like fifteen different stat blocks, and then you can just you know oh you you click on the token, then the bar will change to that particular creature, and then you can just hit the button instead of having to open the the stat block and look to. Look, see if they've got perception, or if you got to hit the oh, wisdom that's instead. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. I don't. I usually don't screw with that very much, but I, I've I've ran some modules where the the modules already had that set up, and it, dude, it, it makes things so much quicker as a DM. I just don't I fuck with I it because it, it takes a while to set up. I bet I did it when I was trying to look because I have like an alternative stat block for my character's transformation. I bet I did it when I was trying to look at that on my phone, and Roll20 is terrible on the phone, mm. and I must have ac accidentally dragged it out there. Yeah, Roll20's fucking mobile app is absolute dog shit. <laughs> so, like, unfortunately, oh, the app? Apple one works. I haven't used the, well, okay, I haven't yeah. Used the app. I just have it on the, like, in the browser. I mean, the, yeah. I do get by occasionally. I can, ma I can like, make a roll or two. <laughs> But in general, or like, or like, change my character. But it's it's a pain every time. It's like it's five times more work than it. Yeah, no, it's best used on a browser, honestly. Like, uh huh. Yeah, they've they've had their mobile app, quote unquote, for years, and it's just or mobile version, and it's just absolute dog shit. They like started to make it and then like gave up halfway through, and we're just like. <laughs> This is fine. Nobody's actually going to use this. <laughs> you know. And then people were like, hey, yeah, on our phone, bet. And then it's just dog shit. <laughs> but, you know. Got your coffee? Oh, yeah. No, I've, I've been back for a minute. I was just letting you guys <laughs> do your thing. 
Well, I finally managed to turn those fucking macros off, so I'm <laughs> delighted with our progress in the break. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right. Well, if you guys are ready to go, you can uh, proceed to the uh, way generation room. Yeah, we do that. All right. So, Gersh, Daily, this is a familiar room for you guys, but uh, Makarov and uh, Betany, you walk into a, into this like fairly large empty room. It's like maybe you know, five meters by ten, five meters. So not super, super large, but large enough. Um, there's like two banks of like technicians typing away at computers. And in the center of the room, there's what's like basically like two large metal pillars um, with like three, three arms coming out of it. And they're kind of slowly spinning. And they're spinning in kind of opposite directions. God's miracles are many. <laughs> mm, yeah. One of the technicians like looks up. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not man made or nothing. All yeah, of and, this is at his design. Yeah, and Gersh, with your passive perception, you hear one of them say under their breath, I've been working on this for fifteen years. <laughs> <laughs> I did this. <laughs> did I hear that? What's your passive perception? Like thirteen. No. <laughs> okay. But Gersh, you also hear like like the the lady next to him. It's it it's okay. It's okay, Barry. Like I we all know you've been here the longest <laughs> and you put the most into it. We know. <laughs> Love it. I just want some recognition sometimes. Anyway. So yeah, you guys walk into this room. Um guy with a clipboard walks up. Ah, uh okay, Gersh, this is the new uh Lambda twenty seven. You're all ready for transport? Indeed. Looking good in here, Barry. <laughs> he he like Gives a thumbs up. All right. Um, Gersh, Daly, you two are fine. Uh, you two are... Do either of you get motion sick? Um, no. You know, I just don't know. I've been in planes and I've been fine. Planes and trains and, you know, all that all right. things. Are either, you, either of you allergic to asparagus? Asparagus. I mean, asparagus makes your pee smell funny, but I always found that funny. I'll take that as a no. Okay, then you should be fine. Fire it up. And he, he walks be. away. He he walks over and he pulls this big, like, a comically large whip. Then, that like, means, the, that means the this machine works really good. Yeah, the... The lights in the room start to, start to dim as those arms start to spin faster and faster, and a rift is pulled open between the, the two banks of arms. And on the like through the rift, you see uh, it's a little fuzzy, but you can see what looks like a back a back alley in a dirty city. Uh, Gersh walks through. You might want to hide that arm, Gersh, or you don't want to get picked over for parts. <laughs> you say as Gersh walks through. All right, so everyone's just going through. Um, Betney's yeah. gonna like kind of hop through. Okay, so you, like <laughs> you walk up and you notice it's like not in the floor, so yeah, you just kind of like hop through a little awkwardly. Um, passing through is. It's just like walking through a door, but you know that feeling you get when, you know, you walk into a room and you kind of forget what you came in for? It's like yeah. that cranked up to 11 
for about two seconds. And you find your guy, you guys find yourselves in a back alley in Kensington. <clears throat> this place oh. is such a shithole. You can really notice that, you, that your car is missing all four tires. <laughs> Gersh looks at Daly when, when she comes through and, uh, and just goes, the heavily armed takes care of that. Uh, excuse me, it, is this supposed to smell like this? Yes. Yeah, it just smells uh, like piss. The piss or the vomit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that asparagus smell. I'm homeless, oh, man. Must say asparagus. Keeping a low profile. You don't want to draw too much attention. There are the wandering junkies, but there's also a lot of cops. Don't need to get anyone booked on weapons charges tonight. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of look so, at my arms. Uh, so, Makarov, you would know that your armor is, like, the paint, essentially, on your armor is equipped with a low-grade uh, mimetic amnestic cognitohazardous right. effect. Yeah. So, general civilians will kind of ignore you. Hot. As long as you're not doing anything crazy. Like, yeah, if you're like, firing rocket launchers, they might be... They'll they'll be able to see you. Or burning the heretics. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. mm. They'll, they'll notice that. Because yeah. they'll notice the fire. Go to town on a, on a tent city of homeless nah, people. <laughs> so, you can, you can walk around with relative impunity. What'd you say, Daly? I said yes. Let's avoid all that. <laughs> <laughs> Purging a tent city won't do any good because there'll just be two more the next day. Damn. Okay, so communications. How far are we from our target? All right. So you guys pop in your your pieces and activate them all. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, mine's been in since I got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's you were just advised to turn it on once you get on location, mm. basically. So you click the little button, the battery activates, and the machine where it, uh, comes on, and you hear, all of you hear uh, Lambda 27, this is, uh, this is Officer Graham. Do I have you all? Loud and clear. Affirmative. All right. Sounds, seems like you've arrived at the location. You are a block away. Uh, your destination is south. What's you the should... name of the building? The building will have a very brown sign that says Dado's Laundry and Tan. All right. You'll come out across the street from the front of the building. So presumably, you guys head south through the alleyway. Um, there's there's piles of weird fluids to uh, avoid here and there. A um, few homeless people you have to step over. But nothing really accosts you on the way there. Where should we split up, guys? Probably the mouth of the alley. We'll wait. Because it's the alley is like like right across the street, right? I mean, it's a little offset, but like okay. if you come out of the it alley, is. you'll be able to see the front of the building. You can see the building from the alley. Yeah. yeah. We'll wait here as we get to the entrance of the alley. <clears throat> All right. I suppose I will go around the corner and come across the street from the other side. Then. Bethany, what about you? Well, if you go in that way, I'll go this way, and then we'll just, you know, you you, you want to go in a moment or two before me? Well, let's just let it be as it is. I think you have much longer legs than I do. It's a whoever gets there first. Oh, all right. See you in a bit. Are you, 
Are you guys going to cross at um, like actual crosswalks or are you yes. jaywalking? Crosswalks. Fucking okay. jaywalkers. All right. Cause Constant if you're... communication. Yeah, because if you're jaywalking, I'm going to need a stealth check. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, Daly's going to jaywalk because I think that adds to her cover. Mystique. Like she's a city, like, she's like a city doctor or whatever. So she's just mm-hmm. trying to. Get, get place there. to place. Yeah. All right. Then give me a stealth check. <laughs> That's not good. That's a one. <laughs> so you guys Plus see. Seven. Yeah, one plus seven. <laughs> so, like, got to dodge some cars in the middle of the street. Yeah, you got to dodge some cars. Um, and then pretty much you guys see Bettany get basically right up to the entrance of the building. And you look over to where Daly is, and a cop pulls up next to her while she's getting to the sidewalk. And rolls down the window. Ma'am, do you know, you know, you're not supposed to walk across the street there, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to get to an appointment. I'm sorry about that. What was that? No. <laughs> Officer Dan the dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, honestly, in Kensington, you would not even notice. Like, straight up, everybody yeah. the all the time. <laughs> Yeah, well, just because just because you rolled a one, really. Yeah. Listen, lady, give me one good reason I should let you walk across the street illegally like that. I mean, and she just kind of gestures, like, around. I mean, I can see about 15 in the general vicinity, and there's, like, all these people just walking around in the street. Yeah, like they're walking past his car. They're walking in between <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Jesus. You know. Yeah, you're right. Listen. <laughs> you, <laughs> you're looking a little too clean for this area, by the way. What are you doing here? I'm a researcher. I'm here to investigate some drug issues that have been going around, as I'm sure you've been made very aware. Oh, drug issues in Kensington? Wow. I was not aware of these. Who are you researching with? My university. And if you weren't aware of the drug issues in Kensington, I think you have better things to do than be talking to me about walking across the street. Yeah, like, give me a luck a luck roll. It's just a flat <laughs> D20. The only drug issue the cop knows about is them running out of supply. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, okay. All right. I got better things to do than bother somebody with a clean lab coat. Get out of here. And he pulls it and he rolls up the window and he drives the fuck off. Like he tries to spin the wheels a little bit to look tough. Wow. Daily laughs and like runs across the street towards the building. Congratulations, Daily. You have avoided being arrested. <laughs> Getting a ticket for jaywalking. Okay. And then mouthing off. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Bethany, uh, Bethany got you got in first. Um, so do you walk through the door right away? Um, I pull it open and I take a look what I see before I step in. So looking inside, you see a not dimly lit, we'll say mediumly lit, um, like office kind of lobby set up. There's a, you notice a few sconces and stuff on the walls, a few lamps. They're just kind of off, most of them. There's like one fluorescent overhead light that's like half working. 
And there's a front desk, but you don't see anyone at it right now. I'm going to walk in. Okay, you walk in. The door closes behind you, and it's the, it's the same room you just saw. Okay. And I still don't see nobody? No, nobody immediately. All right, I'm going to uh, keep my... Because um, they said there was communication issues, right? So I want to check and see if it's still yes. working. All right, so... I just kind of quietly say, come in. <clears throat> Acknowledge. Yep, everybody hears you loud and clear. You can hear them. I'm what in. do you see? Uh, lights that don't really work very well. Front desk and nobody around. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna call out. And uh, I, I leave it the, the mic keyed so you guys can hear me. Hello? <clears throat> Sorry. Hello? God damn it. <laughs> you sounded like some old lady. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Terry. I've brought cookies. <laughs> I've got apples for you. Symbiote oh, is his so... grandma. Yeah. Uh. Fuck. How do I? I I lost the accent. I can't get up. I... Jesus, what is wrong with me? <laughs> oh shit! Uh, Wheels are falling off. In, in her southern drawl, uh, dude. I've been doing voices all fucking day. Uh, at, at this point, uh, yeah, she she's just gonna call out, uh, "Hello, is anybody there?" All right. As you call out, um, you know how in some some buildings, like especially when they're empty, you get like an echo. Mm -hmm. Um, this kind of feels like the opposite. Like the sound almost like drowns itself out or dies. But you don't hear. Nobody seems to respond to your call. You don't hear any movement. All right. Nothing like that. <clears throat> so is there like hallways in an office or anywhere in the vicinity? Um, so walking in a little bit, you see like a little lounge area. There's a there's a vending machine. Um, and then uh closer up to the desk there does to seem to be what looks like a hallway that goes off to the side on the right side and then on the left side you can see a hallway that goes back and a door at the very back of that hallway i'm gonna head towards the uh hallway with the door okay well you've got to kind of get past the desk to do so um but as you get close to the desk you see you don't like there's a spot there where to obviously be a chair, but there isn't one. And instead, there's a billboard that says Dado's Laundry and Tan with a phone number, and on the desk there's a phone. Like a, a little, basically like a little um, office phone just sitting there. It's plugged in. Um, but you, you have to walk by that. Well, in that case, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, seeing the the billboard is, has changed my mind with okay. the phone. I'm going to pick it up and say, well, when in Rome, and dial the number. All right, you dial the number. Uh, it rings. It rings twice, and on the other, hand, other end, you hear a, hello. Um, hello. Hello. Oh, hello, this data, what you need. Oh, God. <clears throat> uh. Hello, Mr. Data. Uh, see, I, I got a friend. He's been getting into drugs lately, and I heard that you make some weird ones. I'm hoping you maybe got something that can not really hurt them, but scare them enough to kind of go straight. You, you maybe got something like that? Oh, Dado, Dado is the best. I can do whatever you need. You trust Dado. <laughs> you want you want to scare your friend. God. Uh, yes, yes, I do. You you want to scare him straight? One hundred percent. Okay. I already I already done for you. Coming to you right to you. I got Amazon Prime. Uh, doesn't Prime deliver to your house? I mean, I'm right here. Yeah, I know where you are. Oh. Well, okay. Uh. Yeah. Do I just hang up now? 
Well, is there anything else you need? I mean, I do like to, you know, meet the person I'd be dealing with. I'm too busy for that. I could send a hamster. I'm sorry, what? I could send my hamster. Is it like a humanoid sized hamster or something? No, a hamster sized hamster. I do like little furry creatures. Why not? Okay, he come to you. Amazon Prime. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. I'll I'll see you at the Amazon Prime man when he gets here. Uh, okay, you, you trust Edo. Yep, trust trust Dado. Like, uh, yeah, I hang up the phone and just go. What in the actual fuck? All right, uh, you you looking around in bewilderment, you. <laughs> catch sight of the front door you do see uh you do see daily walking up at this point and there is a package sitting at the front door and there's a hamster st sitting on the top of the package okay i'm uh uh i'm gonna kind of try and get out of line of sight of the hamster because it's obviously something fucking weird and i'm gonna uh, look at daily and just kind of put finger to lips and I'm going to go back out past her and pick up the package and the hamster. Okay, you pick up the package. It's just a hamster standing on the package. Like, so you kind of have to pick it up a little carefully so he doesn't fall over. Oh, of course. But uh, he's, he's, he's big chilling, sitting on this package. Well, hello there. You don't happen to... You understand me, do you? Weak. It, it, it's not a deep squeak. It, it's oh, Jesus, I noises. thought you said weak. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, it speaks. I will kill you Jesus. and eat your children. <laughs> it's, it's mine. No, it's just a hamster. It doesn't do anything out of the ordinary that you would expect a hamster to do. Mm, um, just in case, can I, like, what's that, uh, da, da, data check, see if this is something known? Um. Or if he I, actually is just a normal fucking hamster. Um, <laughs> you do, give me a database check, yeah. Fifteen? Um, so... Some of the other information about Dato, he does occasionally mention a hamster. Um, there was one. There was one instance he was communicating through, with someone through uh, through email, and in one of his messages, there's a bunch of gibberish at the end of the message, and then the next email he says, "Sorry, hamster walkover keyboard." So he seems to have a pet hamster. Okay, um, I'm gonna kind of put the hamster, like, on, on my shoulder, okay. and, uh, I'm gonna try to walk back in. Okay, uh, Daly is standing right there, um, and you walk back in. Daly, what are you doing? You walking in, too? Daly's kind of been staring uh, at the whole process. Yeah, Bettany has this small Amazon package and a hamster. I'll I'll motion um, Daly towards the uh, billboard on the other side, and just kind of shrug. I think before they like go in, Daly's gonna like whisper about like, s like she's gonna try and peek at the label, like see what it is, and then like whisper about, you know, sending it back for samples, um, and to be careful about opening it. But as far as the hamster, Daly's probably gonna say something about you might want to send that for samples too, and you can try scanning it. True. 
the hamster or the star? Both. Whatever you want to do. I can t um did you Bethany, did you introduce yourself to Dato? Um no. Okay. I didn't think so. So on the package it just says friend. Like to friend with no real with just you know, the address that Dato's laundry and tan is at and doesn't really say too much else because Amazon packages don't have the they don't list the item on there. Mm. But uh yeah, you guys could scan it, you could open the package, whatever you want to do. Well, at least it says friend. It's a lot better than new girl from somebody who should know my name. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Shit, you're <laughs> on here too. <laughs> She, she just turns red. Uh, oops. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I will uh, if uh, Daily wants to scan both of these. Um, you know, I'll uh, show them to her so she can do so. Well, we kind of have to do it outside. We didn't even notice that there were security cameras outside. It would look weird if. I walked up and then, like, you know, all of a sudden he's showing me stuff. And... That's yeah, fair. So you you do look around and you don't see any cameras inside. Okay. What about outside and in the doorway? Though? You didn't see any outside either. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So, yeah, so Daly would definitely, like, you know, ask about the box and the hamster and offer to scan it. Yes. Yeah, like Daily, you have no idea why uh Bethany picked up this box. She has not communicated that she called Dato. <laughs> well, I I, I, mean, I, I I didn't want to act like I knew her in, just in case the you know the hamster was actually I don't know something sentient. <laughs> but I mean, right. I, I I I would uh, I would tell her now, like you know, oh there there's a a little tiny billboard thing over there and phone number on it and. That's how I got a hold of him. He he spoke to me. Uh, said he wouldn't meet me, but he would send out this. And just kind of motion to the, the hamster. <clears throat> oh, and, and this. A little. <laughs> Showing her the, um, the, the package. You, uh, you want to do your thing? Um, yeah, let's go for it. All right. So you, you scan these two things. Um, I can tell you right now, it's a hamster and it's a box. You'd have to open the box to scan the individual, whatever's inside. Well, yeah, I was going to open the box. Oh, okay. Um, so can I scan the inside of... Yeah, so you open the box, and there's just, like, a little packing slip and a little bottle of pills in there. It's, you know, shakes. Like, there's not a huge amount of pills. There's, like, probably two or three. Like, a really small amount. But on the side and on the packing slip, it, it just says, pill for what scare you straight. So I turn to Bethany and say, so what are these supposed to do? Well, you see, I, I told him I had a friend uh, that had been doing drugs, and I wanted something that would scare him straight, you know, not kill him, but just scare him into, you know, straightening up his life. Yeah, I, I, I kind of took it from our, uh, our mutual friend there, just that a little idea. Yikes. Makes me scared to think about what these could really be capable of. Well, we wanted a sample, right? Well, do you do you want to try to like test one of the pills? Not take it. Like you could take <laughs> it and you could grab the pill and put it into your um into your little scanning thingy. Well, yeah, I'm gonna take a sample and scan mm -hmm. the pill. But yeah, into your yeah. portable lab kit. That was it. Right, but. I don't know. We still don't know its effects on people, but maybe we can get an idea of like what is going yeah, on. Yeah, you can. You're in the past, like you've used your lab kit to get approximations of what pills might do to human physiology. 
it's a pretty sophisticated uh, piece of equipment you have. So you take this pill, um, you run it through your machine, and you get a readout that has something like intense fear effect anti-homosexuality. Fucking <laughs> what? Jesus! It scares Damn. you straight. <laughs> You know what? That, that's fair. That's fair. Well, that's not exactly what I asked for. It's literally what you asked for. Not in her mind, but it does make sense. No. I like it. <laughs> this is how all of Data's drugs work. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna key the mic and let them, uh, let the others know what happened. Okay, so Gersh, Marikov, you get all the information about what just happened, <laughs> and you now have like three, three pills left of instant gay conversion. Damn. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Christian conversion camp. Uh, Christian conversion camp. Now in a tuple size. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now it, it, it dissolving capsule form. I release dissolving capsule. So <clears throat> you, you've been on more missions than I have. Uh, what y'all think we should do now? Well, I assume it's my turn to go in. I mean. This is crazy, but I would like to see the root of the craziness. Thought you were scouting the building. We need actionable in information. I thought the plan was for me to get close to him. Find out where we can go. Yeah, exactly. Bethany didn't find out where he was. Well, no, but we needed a sample too, right? Yes, exactly. A of... I just took care of the first part. A yeah. sample of pill to fix your story. <clears throat> what? Uh, uh, the pill to fix your story is the main drug you guys are actually looking for. Mm-hmm. Oh, to fix our story? <clears throat> Maybe nope. Daly should order that. <clears throat> Are y'all all right out there? Clearly, ordering it won't be enough. <sighs> oh, we're great. Are you smoking crackers? <laughs> Jesus Christ. When in Rome. No. Cracks were <laughs> right before combat. <clears throat> It's just a little weed to take the edge off. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think Dimitri inhaled his cigar. All right. So what are you guys doing? More. Get more information over coming in guns blazing. Oh, my God, Gersh. Well, I'll be going in and... <laughs> I'm going to question him about research on a drug to fix your story. If this plan fails, we can always smoke him out. Sounds like y'all do enough that for, of that for everybody. <laughs> yeah, we'll smoke him out with the chronic for sure. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Why don't you... Get some information on that. I'm going to do a little poking around, okay? Sounds like a plan to me. All right. So you guys kind of split up. Uh, <laughs> daily, you go up to the desk. Um, Bettany, where are you going first? Uh, I'm going to try that uh, <clears throat> that door behind the desk. Let it down the hallway. Okay. So you get, we'll, we'll get you to that door first, um, and then we'll do uh, daily stuff. Um, so you get all the way down to the door. Um, 
no other features. Like, there aren't even any light switches down this hallway. Uh, but it is a door with a doorknob. What would you like to do? I test the doorknob. Is it locked? It is not locked, but the doorknob does not operate. So if I... Uh... But if you pull it slightly, it does seem to move. It just doesn't move very nicely. Like it's scraping it... on the floor kind of not nicely, or...? Yes. Ooh. I'm a... Like it's hung, it's hung on the door on the hinges very poorly. I want to I wanna check for traps just in case. Oh, sure. Give me an investigation check. God damn, really? Now I roll bad? Not, not amazing. But uh, yeah, you, you look at the front of the door. There's nothing obviously on this side. Uh, but you can't really look like through the crack onto the other side without fully opening the door pretty much. So you're not sure if there's any traps on the other side. All right, so if it's not hung well, can I kind of, like, lift it up a bit and open it? Will it, will it glide a little better? Um, yeah, you lift it up to pull it, and it the bottom hinge just kind of pulls off the door. Oh, um, I'm going to try and set, uh, finish opening it the rest of the way and just kind of, like, set it... Uh, to where okay, it's, get, a, it's let's, most open. Position. Give me, give me just a dex check to see how well you do this without making any noise. Trying to keep this quiet. Yeah, you managed to hold on to it without like rattling the door against the walls or against the floor or ceiling at all. You don't get too surprised by the hinge popping off. So you manage to open up the door. Um, and on the other side, you see. Just a dark, another dark hallway. Um, this one has even less lighting. Well, I got my devil sight, so I ain't scared. Okay, so but we'll bounce over to Daily. Yep. Um, Daily, are you dialing that number? <laughs> yep, Daily is dialing the number. Okay, you dial this number, and. Um, it rings twice, and then you hear, "Oh, hello, this Dado. Two calls in one in one hour. What you need?" Hi, Dado. Um, my name is Doctor Daly, and I've been trying to contact you uh, in concerning your products. I hear you have a drug to change your story, and I believe that I have some research that could really improve that particular product. Dado's drug don't need no improvements. Dado the best. You trust Dado. Oh, I do trust you. However, I would very much love to, you know, grow your, your, uh, <laughs> grow your business with you. Perhaps we could even make other versions of some of your products, maybe even more accessible ones, make you a whole conglomerate, grow your market. They know the biggest business in the whole world. They they don't got Amazon Prime. Oh, I'm talking beyond Amazon Prime. I'm talking about owning Amazon Prime. By the time we're done, we could take over the world, Dato. Hmm. How would Dato do this? Oh, I know. Dato make drug for doing this. It's done. <laughs> it's on its way to you. A drug to take over the world? Jesus See, Christ. They don't, they don't gift you whatever you need. Why Why are you gifting me this? I, we could both take over the world. They don't we be in could... contact. You okay. trust they don't. How will you reach me? Fuck. Amazon Prime. <laughs> 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 that was coming. Like already, doctor. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> they don't, you trust they don't. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just as much as I trust Amazon Prime. Oh. Anyway, you try drug. 
Have a good day. Bye. Click. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it, we're assuming that mine is going to show up outside the... Uh... Yep, pretty much. You look over and there's another fucking... There's a little package at the front door. All right. This one is addressed to doc, to uh, Dr. Daly, researcher. All right, I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and um, try and look like, you know, normal... Get to collect the package and like leave the building and go report to the crackheads waiting in the alley with it. Okay, where, so you're gonna uh, leave Bethany in here. Well, right now she's all right, but we're just gonna sample it there and then like I'll come out. We can all go in at that point without like the disguises and shit. Okay. So. All right. So you walk back over, across the street, get over to the alleyway, and uh, Gersh and. Dimitri are waiting there. <clears throat> What's going on? Where's Bettany? Bettany is exploring inside. There doesn't really seem to be anyone in there. But anyway, Daniel Four gave agents me a... went missing in there. Well, listen, we're, we're, give me a minute now, meth head. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Dano gave me a, a pill to take over the world. So... <laughs> Here it is. I would like to take a sample of it, but then we all need to go in after Bethany, obviously. Uh, yeah, does, so. does she, she? When she says here it is, does she hand it to Gersh or does she show it to Gersh? Oh no. She, uh, she just like raises the package. You asked Dato to create a pill to take over the world. No, I asked. I told him that if we worked together, we could make his business so great that it would take over the world. And he just said he would gift this to me, and then he'd be in contact via Amazon Prime. So we're getting to realize how dangerous of an anomaly you could possibly just cause to be created. Well, we have it, so I, I assume it's okay. And if it really works, he clearly has the power to do this on a dime anyway. So it's not like we're we're stopping or hurting anything. Keep it contained. Do you open the package? I mean, what else am I going to do? Keep it contained. Is there a way to teleport it back to me? <laughs> uh, not I mean, you could walk back to where the way was, um, inform Graham, and he'll have them open up a way, and you can just kind of hand it back through the portal. Cool. Well, what does everyone else think? Do we think we should send it back to headquarters, or do we think that it might come in handy? How did this work? Did You just called and ordered? Literally, yes. <laughs> Wait, you know what? And then Daly's going to open the package and she's going to examine the pills or whatever's inside for like instructions. Okay, so you open it up and pretty much like the last one, um, there's a little packing slip and a small bottle of pills. This one only has one, but the pill is labeled pill for research takeover world. And it's, oh, like, man. almost all one word. Daly's eyes kind of go big. So there's no instructions? There's no, like, take nope. the food? Oh, it does say, um, don't take if pregnant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so then, I guess, um... Or Irish. Ha, we gotta send somebody back to... Wait the... here, Makarov. Don't... Just keep everything secure. Gersh Makarov walks over stands the there. <laughs> Gersh walks, walks over and walks into the building. Okay. <laughs> so Gersh walks in. Uh, real quick, Bettany, what are you doing? I'm continuing. I, I'm gonna key the mic, though, and let him know, like, where I'm going. Okay, you let him know you're going down this dark dank, mysterious hallway. 
Um, yeah, you walk in. Um, probably 10, 20 paces in. It's more of just like a straight shot hallway. No light switches, no nothing. There's one or two light fixtures above you that are busted. They don't even have lights, light bulbs in them. Um, but up ahead, the the hallway makes a sharp right turn. But that's about another like eight or so paces away. But you're also approaching a hallway on your left. I'm going to creep up. <clears throat> Um, to the intersection, and yeah. I'm gonna just kind of peek each way. Stealth check. What? Stealth check. You said you're creeping. Oh, yes. No, I didn't understand what you said. I thought you said like self pick. I was like, what? What the fuck is a self pick? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna need a selfie check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ten. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. So you so you walk up and you kind of like you know shimmy up against the wall trying to conceal yourself and as you kind of get to the corner the piece of corner bead on the wall flakes off drops and hits the floor making a, a metallic rattle oops <clears throat> sorry pa ipsy but you don't hear anything nothing seems to react to that all right, and down each hallway. What's the so look the, like? The the hallway that goes to the right, that's another eight paces down. Like it's it's not an intersection. It's just like a hallway, and then that goes down, and then turns to the right. But you're at a little doorway that goes to the left. Well, right now, leave no stone unturned. I'm gonna check that yeah. door. All right, so yeah, it's like three paces in. Um, you open up, there's another door. It doesn't seem to be locked. But you open it up, and it looks like a little break room or storeroom. There's like a few assorted boxes that are that are stacked up. There's a little table with a chair. There's a, a mini fridge that you can hear is on. There's a shelf with a microwave on it. Not a whole lot else in here that you can immediately see. I'm uh, I'm gonna pop the fridge. See what's in it. Okay, so you pop the fridge, and inside are a few pill bottles. And the labels. The labels all say, "Drug for to fix your story." I'm gonna take them all and. As you uh, pick them up, you notice each bottle feels empty, but they are sealed. And are the uh, I'm guessing the bottles are not see-through. Um, they're transparent. You you know, like a lot, most pill bottles are, but you don't see anything in there either. They feel empty. They sound empty. They look empty. Well, maybe. Maybe there's some residue are. we can uh, we can get. So I'm uh, I'm I'm I, I'm gonna say my dress has some pockets. <laughs> oh, a, yeah, you've got uh, like I'm a little a... tactical bag too. So yeah, I'll, uh, this is obviously I'll a fantasy game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't tell you it's the it's the dress of many pockets. Dado send dress to you, Amazon Prime. <laughs> 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 I'll pocket them, and right. I'll, I'll, I'll key the mic and say that uh, you know I've got some pill bottles, with, and I'll give them the name. Maybe we can get some residue off them. They feel and sound empty, though. Right. Uh, with that, we'll cut back to Gersh. Uh, Gersh, you are storming into the front lobby. Yeah, following. <clears throat> I don't want to be left outside, so. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should all just go in now. Yeah, yeah we're all gonna. Yeah, we're all gonna go in. Um, Taylor's gonna ditch the box and I guess like wrap the pill up in something and like. Well, stash it's in a it bottle. Her. Yeah, but I won't carry the whole bottle either with a label on there. Okay. 
But yeah, you guys walk into the lobby, and it is like I described before. Though the that door at the far end to the left is open, because that's where Bettany went down. All right, Bettany, what's your position? Uh, well, you go down that hallway, and there's a little door that's open. Uh, go through uh, one door, and there's another door that's open. It's a little bike room. I'm in there. I'm just uh, uh, I'm just checking the cupboards and and everything in here. The fridge is where I found the pill bottles. Uh, I'll be here a couple minutes longer trying to trying to do a little more searching while I wait for y'all. Uh, yeah. Gersh, Gersh walks up to the phone first. Okay. Picks yeah. up the phone. Dials yeah. it up. All right. It rings twice. <clears throat> Third customer today. Best business day ever. This is Data. What you need. <clears throat> I heard about a drug to fix your story. Yes, that is one of the drugs I make. You How need do I that get drug? Some? I could send to yeah. you, but it's not for you. I could hear from your voice. Not for me. I can send you something else, what you want. I need a drug to fix my story. Well, it's not for your story. It's for someone else's. Whose story is it for? That's for, that's for that person to know. I, need I can just tell to, it's not you. I need to a drug to find the person whose story I need to fix. I could tell I could send you that. That's what you want. That's what I want. All right, I send it direct to you, Amazon Prime. This drug worked good. You trust it though. <laughs> Gersh hangs up the phone. Oh, rude. <laughs> you hear after the phone hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, presumably Daly and Dimitri are a little closer to the front door, and you hear like a package get dropped off. And by the time you look, it's there's nobody that was there to drop it off, but there's now a package there. Uh, yeah, Gersh goes to pick it up. All right, or... you pick it up, and it's addressed to to Rude. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Got him. Uh, open it. Opens it. Yeah. What's the? All right. You open it. There's a little packing slip, and there's a uh, there's a little a uh, little bottle with a few pills in it, and the ty- the uh, the pill is apparently called drug to find what story it is. <laughs> Ger- Gersh pops. Ooh. Okay. Damn. Let's see. Give me a Hume save. And a Con save. Okay. Holy shit. Um, Daly's going to start looking for like a suit or something from where the package came from in the meantime you're gonna search for what what are you searching for delivery method oh um you don't see a shoot outside or anything like you'd very distinctly heard the package like kind of drop down on the ground like not like it was thrown there like somebody placed it and then let it fall against the glass basically But whoever did it was at like as soon as it exited their hands, they were gone. Right. So yeah, she's gonna be looking for like some kind of trapdoor or some kind of you know delivery mechanism right now. Okay. Yeah, you're looking around. You're. I can tell you, you're probably not gonna mm-hmm. find anything. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. But Gersh, uh, you are currently poisoned. But. Ah, okay. With that 19 Hume save, you manage to uh, hold on to the narrative. 
you you suddenly are aware of the presence of someone. They are in this building. Seems like the upper levels. You don't upper know. Level. Yeah. It's one you of don't... the top two floors. Something like that. They're somewhere okay. up there. You're aware of their presence. You're not sure exactly where they are. But you know that's the person this the drug in question is for. And they're here somewhere. Okay. And you can you hold on to that awareness for like a round before it dissipates. Mm, how many pills you, are there? Uh there's like three left. But you are poisoned for an amount of time. We'll see. Okay. Fair enough. <clears throat> there's just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you see like Gersh take this pill kind of like almost like you see on his face he has like a eureka moment almost and like looks kind of up and around and then basically starts retching strong horrible but useful we have to go upstairs. Oh. Uh, Bettany came back, right? I think Bettany was still looking around in that room. Yeah, I'm still in the uh, in the. Okay, but we. Okay, but we see the. We know uh, which way she went because we see yep. the doors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't really see together. that hallway that well right now. Find some uh, stairs. But uh, Bettany, the only other like notable thing in this room is they're kind of what looks like like an employee locker kind of thing. But it's like it's not like one of those small multi lockers where there's like six or seven of them. It's just kind of one that goes from like floor to ceiling, and it's like maybe a foot, like twelve inches wide. You guys are Canadian, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we know what a foot yeah. is, my guy. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's why. That's why earlier I was like trying to measure things in paces. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, we good. We yeah, good. No. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be inclusive here. <laughs> um. Yeah. So there's 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 a, a locker like I described. It's Got closed check. though. All right, you open it up. No, no, tra trap check, trap check. Oh, trap check. Yeah, give me an investigation. Um, yeah, it's definitely not trapped. I'm going to try and open it. All right, you open it up, and it doesn't explode or anything because it's not trapped. <laughs> All right, sweet, sweet. <laughs> um, inside looks like what is like basically a Best Buy employee uniform. You know, khakis, a belt. Um, the belt is in, in the, the pant loops, and it's, like, closed and tightened. Um, a shirt's in there, and it's just kind of hanging there. But it's not like it's on um, clothes hangers or anything. It's almost hanging there as if, uh, like, in, like if, there's, if there were a mannequin in there wearing the clothes, kind of. That's kind of how it's hanging in the locker. I'm going to reach out and just kind of like push the shoulder. Uh, yeah, it feels pretty solid. And uh, what's your AC? <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, at the moment, it is 15. Damn, that's a three <laughs> plus stuff. Um, as you touch the shoulder and push it, you definitely feel something solid, like something is in that clothing. And as you push, like, say you push the 
like on your right to the the left shoulder as you do that the right arm moves forward to to take a swing at you and you instinctively duck under it uh I this keep... shirt just took a swing at you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stepping back. Does it leave the locker? Um, it starts to ambulate and starts to um like the arms kind of move forward and as if they were hands, like it grabs the sides of the locker and starts to pull itself forward. Okay, I'm uh, I, I'm gonna take several steps back real quick. I'm gonna key the mic and say, "Trouble, break room." And uh, if you'll allow me, I'm gonna bust out my symbiote. Okay, yeah, you can totally do that as a bonus action. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna wait and see if it gets close enough. And I, I, I kind of just want to try and keep it at arm's reach is my, my main aim. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, you can roll initiative. Uh, I can't click my token. You can't? No. I have no control over it. Are you the one that dragged it out? Nope. Ah, that's I, didn't, I don't remember dragging it out. It just appeared out of nowhere. Oh, okay. Well, then drag out a new one, and then click that one. <laughs> this will have to do for now. All right, I am just going to drag out a commoner stat block real quick. And just use that. Where is that? fucking initiative bullshit. Where is it on here? Uh, it just looks like a dice uh, on the right, near the top right side. Right, well, I'm just going to roll physically. All right. <laughs> yeah, uniform question mark. Damn. All right. Yeah, you guys hear um trouble break room and presumably you guys start running in. But uh yeah, it'll it me, yeah. Yeah. It'll take you like a round to just get to that door basically. Uh, Bethany, you're up. What are you doing? Um, I want to try to grapple this thing. Okay. That's athletics. Yep. Damn. Because what with the weird shit's going on, I'm not a hundred percent sure that uh, you know, th this isn't some person that took the pills and are in a bad state. So I, I, I'm I'm just gonna try to grapple him and say Calm down. I'm I'm not trying to hurt you. Okay. Do so something so, to know so you can tell me if I hear you or if you hear me. Alright. Um is is that your turn? Do you yes. use your second attack? Uh no, no, I'm just trying to hold him there. Okay, cool. Oh, that was a bad idea, wasn't it? Uh, what's your new AC? 17. 17? Okay. Um, that is a 12. So it misses. And oh. he doesn't have to roll on any other uh, tables. But yeah, you grapple this thing. Um, you, you try to talk some sense into it, and it takes another swing at you, which it kind of glances off of your... Uh, Allegaden black goo exterior. But it is your turn again. And and around this point, um, everybody else, you kind of get up to that hallway. It is kind of difficult for you all to fit through the hallway, considering Makarov's um, 
Girth. <laughs> yeah. Fucking girth, bud. <laughs> but yeah, you guys get up to the doorway and you see in front of you, um, like pretty much a few paces into the into the new hallway, there is a a another uniform that's just floating there. But this one is already moving. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> As if someone were wearing the clothes. But as you approach it turns around. Everyone else can roll initiative now. Nice. Are you doing on D and D Beyond? Uh, yeah. It's at the top. Oh wow! I thought, I thought you were doing it on uh, roll twenty. Oh bad. Oh wait, I heard D and D Beyond. I meant roll twenty. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it looks like it. <clears throat> oh. Okay, those are both for Gersh. But whoops. Four. I didn't think it clicked the first time. Great initiative, guys. Okay. Yeah. All right. Daily got 13. Uh, how can I add? Let's add her right there. Do this. And I'll modify it. All right. Oh, Bethany, it is your turn again. This thing just took a swing at you and missed. What do uh, you do? Have, have, have they mentioned there's more of them? Mm, not yet. They just found out. All right. Well, um, I'm gonna say, well, if you can't hear me, all bets are fucking off. And I just, I, I'm gonna try and like, uh, as my first attack, if you allow, I'm gonna try to just huck it uh, against a wall. Sure. Give me an attack roll. Uh, would that just be unarmed, or would it just be like a um, strength check? No. Give me. You can use your symbiote attack, like. Symbiote fancy weapon, whatever it is. Wow. Fucking 11. wow. Um Yeah, that doesn't hit. Alright. Um well in that case, I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna do a uh full on claw attack then. Try and uh get right into the shirt. Oh, there yeah, we go. Alright, let's see if I set this up right. Alright, give me that demo. Yeah, there we go. Dimash. Uh, do I have anything else for a bonus action? Where's my cheat sheet gone? There it is. Bonus action. Yeah, that's a pretty solid hit. Uh, Bonus action. I'm going to use my Graven Noose, I think. See if it's got okay. a neck. You could go for it. Yeah. Um. Uh. It is a... The Charisma save. All right. Man, rolling fantastic. It fails. <laughs> I don't even okay. know what your DC is. It rolled a three. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it would be the same as my spell since my spell is charisma, yeah. Well, yeah, it would just use your, yeah, your yeah, spell safety C because okay. it's it, like it's a specific class item. Yeah, it is a. Uh, where, where's my spells? Uh, sixteen, and okay. he takes three d six psychic, maybe. Uh, yeah, whatever I wrote. There it is. Damn, <laughs> that's a good roll. Does it seem to have affected it? Um, that restrains it, right? Uh, it does. It restrains it uh, five feet in the air. Uh, but I'm more wondering about the damage. If there's any. All right. So bonds. yeah, you see, you see this spectral noose come down and wrap around this thing's neck? Question mark. And it does lift off the ground, and there's this psychic pulse that you can feel. Um. I'm going to say that this thing is weak to Psychic. So go ahead and roll an additional um, 3d6. Eleven. All right, that does put it away. Okay. You see this, you see this noose tighten around this thing's neck, and you hear a snap? But you don't see anything except for the noose, like, tighten dramatically. You see the body, or what is presumably the body, you see the shirt and pants twitch violently and then go still. Um, and now I need to roll a d100. Oh, no. All right, 48. All right. After that, it goes still. Then you see a person phase back into existence, basically, and fall down on the ground with a broken neck and a big splash wound up the front. And as it as it dies, there's this big burst of energy, a burst of light, and now there's a unicorn standing there too. It looks at you. It looks at the guy, the dead guy on the ground. And you hear in your mind, what is this place? Where am I? Who are you? Who is this? Do you have carrots? Uh, and that's the end of your turn. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this shit's wild. Yeah, so you're now in this relatively small room with a unicorn. Fuck. Um, Dr. Daly, it's your turn. Um, what's your marching order going into this hallway? Probably bringing like, up the rear. Yeah, like basically Gersh and Daly are kind of interchangeable, but you can't get past Makarov. <laughs> yeah. I would say Gersh probably took off immediately as soon as... Uh, I don't know how much movement we got between rolling initiative and uh, hearing hearing that there was something going on and rolling initiative. You pretty much got to the doorway, and then that's where you saw the uh, the floating clothing. <laughs> Savage, I like how you misspelled noose. <laughs> Did I really? Where? Yeah, you spelled it news. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what the fuck? Fucking got him. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I think they've integrated, like, Windows with some, like, fucking autocorrect shit, because that happens all the fucking time lately. And when I'm typing on a keyboard, that's the one time where I'm actually good at typing. Yeah, that's you. You've had some incredible typos. Um, oh, you ain't but, saying uh, shit. I promise you. Yeah, but uh, wow. yeah, daily. It's your turn, and I'm gonna say, you know, you can get up into the into whatever this thing is. There's a floating Best Buy uniform.
Lauren, you there? Let me check. Um, sorry, my page oh. shut down. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, you're pretty much at the, the doorway into that darker hallway and probably like 10 feet or so in, there's a floating pair of pants and a shirt that is seemingly moving towards you in an aggressive way. No. <laughs> Everybody else can see this too, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And you did get a message from Bettany that uh, all bets are off. So presumably this is something aggressive. Mm -hmm. Is it in the hallway or it's in a room? It's in the hallway. <laughs> like it's directly in front of you. Mm -hmm. And like... I don't know, are the pants floating like normal like height above the ground, like um, a couple inches or like way above? The ground? It's it's like somebody invisible is wearing the clothes. Oh, okay. But there's no shoes. Interesting. No. I don't know. I You just shoot it. It's a pretty ugly shirt. You're not coming through. Oh, is she Yeah, talking? I'm just going to try to shoot it. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Give me that attack roll. This with your shotgun. All right, 18. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and give me that damage. All right, you squeeze shot off. Um, you kind of catch it in the leg. It doesn't do a whole lot seemingly to it, but it does seem to stagger from the shot a little bit, but it's it continues to move forward in a, a aggressive shirt way. Mm. Anything else for you? No. All right, it is now that uniform's turn. And it is going to close the distance, and because Daly is out in front, it's going to take a swing at her. Man, rolling fantastic tonight. Daly, what's your AC? Seventeen. 17 yeah it uh it kind of brings both hands question mark together like kind of do like a double like a double-handed like overhead slam but partially be seemingly because you're so short but it seems kind of uncoordinated and it just goes like way short and slams onto the ground in front of you but you do hear an audible thud as it hits the ground, so it is something substantial. That guy's dead. A thud, but no people noises? No, you don't hear breathing or anything. Marikov, it is your turn. Makarov, but yes. Makarov. Uh, <laughs> I got it right most of the time. <laughs> 
<laughs> most of the time. Uh, yeah, fucking gonna rock up. Argentine? You know. Okay. 30 feet, get as close as I possibly can. Yeah, it's not, it's it's like maybe, you know, 5, 10 feet away from you at this point. Oh, fair. Because it ran up to daily. Okay. So daily's right. kind of between you and it, but daily's really short and you're pretty tall, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to rock up. Uh, I'm going to point one of my flamers at it. Okay. <laughs> Go for and, it. And well, bam. Yeah, that hits. Well, bam. Yeah, that hits and does damage. Yeah. Um, so you roast to this guy. Um, <laughs> but as soon as the flame clears, it's still there. That's fine. I got more. Yeah. It's still there, yeah. and the clothes are only mildly on fire. Eh, 14. That does not hit. Okay. Uh, bonus like, action attack. It's okay. two weapon fighting. Yeah. Oh, you don't need to use your bonus action for it, right? Oh. Did you you took a feat, right? No, I have the fighting style. Okay, then yeah. Yeah, and I didn't. I forgot to ask which which set of rules we were rocking. Yeah. So yeah, because you have the fighting style, you don't need to use a bonus action. So yeah, that hits, and uh, that is enough to do it beautiful so like, just a few controlled bursts yep yeah it seemed to like that second volley like you were sure that it was gonna it was in range but it just like phased through it somehow or ignored it you're not really sure but that third gout does get it as long as it burns yeah it just he burns up it very clearly makes the same motions a person that is dying on fire would make. Damn. Before it collapses backwards, and you see a now very badly burnt person phase back into existence. And... 17. Yes. Dimitri, for the next 10 minutes, your voice sounds completely different. Sure. Uh, it, yeah. Go ahead and try that Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, Anything else for you? No. That'll be it. No, that's all my action economy. Okay. Gertwin, it is now your turn. All right. Um, Gershwin rocks up to behind Makarov. <laughs> uh, there's, <clears throat> there's nothing else in the hallway, right? Correct. Uh, yeah, well, he just takes... no, well, there is, now that the flame is clear, you see one more uniform down the hallway. Okay. Uh, how far away? Um, it's probably about 30 feet down the hallway. Okay. Um. Yeah, Gersh uh, just rocks up behind Makarov, takes a knee, like, down and, like, to his left, and fires uh, a burst at the shirt. All right. Is it... One attack roll and or three yeah, attack rolls. It's one attack roll. Uh yeah, that hits. Give me that damage. Alright, All right, that that many numbers. Got it. That many numbers. All right. Anything else for you, Gersh? Um. Uh, 
Nope. That's it. All right. So you pepper this thing with uh, sonic bullets that kind of they ripple through the air and they ripple into this thing's chest but it's still standing and it kind of it makes a weird pose like without the hands and face you can't really it's hard to understand what it's doing <laughs> mm. until kind of the very like once it completes the motion um it's very clearly kind of like pantomiming firing a gun at you Oh, okay. Uh, and that is a 22. Does that hit you? Uh, yeah, that meets... Okay. Yeah, you take 6, 6, 13. You take uh, 15 force damage. Mm. And... Saucy. That's a 20. Oh. Uh, Centered on you. The grease spell takes effect. Oh, fuck. All right. Was that a deck save? You have been begreased. Or does that wait till the beginning of my turn? Uh, probably the beginning of your turn, I'll say. Okay. Let's see. Pulling it up now. That's going to hit macro oh. too. When the grease appears, each creature standing in its area must succeed on a deck save, save it, or fall prone. What is these things, DC? Well, 13 doesn't make it, so you yeah, fall was prone. Say, would danger <laughs> yeah. sense proc on this? Yes. Bet. Fucking 21. Let's yeah, go. you keep your feet. You just like stomp your feet, clearing a little bit of that grease, getting you yourself a good a good grip. <laughs> I probably yeah. should have advantage on that because I was like literally on a knee already. But even with advantage, <laughs> I fucking failed. <laughs> yeah, like you feel your knee slip out from under you. <laughs> Whoops. Yep. Fucking old man. Whoa. Kirsch flops right down like a fish. Yep. All right. Top of the round. Um, we'll we'll push to finish this combat because it's just about over. Um, sure. Bettany, it is your turn. You're in a room with a unicorn and a dead guy. Damn. Um, uh. Guys, guys, these are people. And what? what's the procedure for a unicorn? I don't know. I've never been a unicorn before. You hear in your head. Wait, <laughs> what? What the fuck? I know. I'm confused. Are, are, you're not the dude who just died, right? No, I, I've never seen that guy in my life. I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> Guys, what is going on? I was hoping you could tell me. I miss having hands. Uh, uh, wait here. He's, uh, <laughs> Henrik's gonna head out into the hallway. Okay. Um, yeah, you head out into the hallway. You. Look right, you see the rest of your squad. Uh, Gersh is flat on his ass. Marikov is standing there very ominously. And uh, Daly is kind of reloading their gun. Um, and then on, there's also a, a very dead one of those uh, clothing creature dudes. All burnt up on the ground. Um, and then on the left, there is, like farther th down the hallway, there is one more of those uniform creatures. Uh, is it is is the uniform creature that's still up past? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, is he past the past the rest of the team? Like, yes. Okay. He's farther down the hallway. Like they're close to that first door you came in through. Okay. So I probably can't really get to that creature without. Um, you probably could. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you're you're at you're starting from a lot closer to it. So. Oh right, and I forgot I got fifty foot moving speed right now. Oh fuck. <laughs> Mobile feet plus I get ten yep. from my my uh, pack to the cloak. Oh yeah, the pack. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh yeah. So you could definitely get to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a rush it. Okay, go for it. And yeah, since. I'm going to feel bad if, if there was a way to save these people and we find out later, but. Impossible to know right now. <laughs> Oops, sorry, wrong thing. Uh, where's my claws? I meant to hit that. 21 uh, and yeah, 17? Yeah, both hit. Yeah, all right. Those both hit. Is it still up? Uh, let me do some math. It is just barely up. Well, um... So you rip into this thing, and you very clearly see, like, one of the pant, pant legs. Like, you slice right through it, and it falls down onto the floor. And then you see the figure, like, shift its weight onto the other leg. Okay, um... <clears throat> debating whether I should use this or not. Yeah, you know what? Um, I get... One per short rest, so I'm gonna use it. <clears throat> uh, if I hit with both attacks, uh, I get to make a third attack, no action required. Okay. Yeah, so go ahead. 12. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, you, uh, so both of your claws, or however you want to flavor it, um, yeah, that puts it down. How do you do it? I basically, I, I stick both claws into it, kind of lift it up in the air, and the third attack is me pulling it apart. Nice. So, yeah, you, uh, you perform this maneuver, and normally you, you, you know you would be showered with gore upon doing this. But you rip this thing in half, and you drop both pieces onto the floor. Oh, yeah, dude's just in chunks. Yeah. Wow, if you could see it, he'd be in chunks. Yeah, ripped stem to stern. So, he is ripped in half, but... Ooh. So, for the next minute, you have the spell Cast Invisibility cast upon yourself. I'm invisible? No, you, you uh, see invisibility. Oh. Okay. So oh no! <laughs> see invisible things, which means before it fades back into existence, you see the chunks of this guy you have torn in twain, and you see the blood that now covers yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna turn back to the group. Uh, something happened. <laughs> I'll end my turn. Yeah. And then, and then, as Bettany turns, the rest of the group also sees the blood and the chunks of that guy that Bettany just ripped in half fade back into existence. I'll be me. All right, congratulations! You killed three, uh, Humans. dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit. That's where we'll end tonight's session. Fucking torching bitches and tearing them apart. I've I've got I've got a feeling there there was a puzzle there, but probably Bettany's but good at puzzles. It. Yeah, Bettany's good at puzzles. Henrik, not so much. He's more of a you know slaughter and eat kind of person. Stab first, ask questions later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> They had guns. Like, Gersh got shot. <laughs> uh, yeah, you actually don't see, like, a gun on the ground anywhere. Just pretended to shoot me? It, it, I got shot with finger guns? Yes. Is that what I you're know. saying to me? Yes, that is what I'm saying to you. <laughs> pew, pew. Right well, welcome to the drug what for fix your story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Three pill bottles. I'm an idiot. Oh. Now those those three were sealed. 
Oh, they were sealed. Yeah. Oh, the pills are invisible. Maybe gross. Or they're only meant for the individual. Something like that, maybe. That is what Dato told Gersh. <laughs> A viewer in my chat just goes rip janitors. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Poor fucks. <laughs> One of them was only two weeks away from retirement. Yeah, as we no, my only weakness being lit on fire and being cut in half, oh. <laughs> getting shot a bunch of times. As we end, you can just see Bethany just like staring back into the break room, and she just looks at the rest of you and just points. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a unicorn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gersh <laughs> just laying in a greasy puddle. <laughs> yeah, damn. All right, I'm logging. Talk to you guys later. I'm right, right. Night, peace. GG boys and girls. Hells yep. yeah. That was good. Good shit. Top end session zero. Yeah, I didn't actually think we would get to play in tonight. Yeah, I wasn't sure how long the session zero was going to take. Yeah. No, that's fair. Good little intro. Mm -hmm. Look, oh, I'm have, glad you guys went in through the lobby. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll I'll be back in a minute. Well, thank you for uh, for tuning in, and uh, I'm just watcher here. Uh, uh, oh no, it's uh, it, it's a session zero. So like we started before we actually got to the uh, <clears throat> got to the playing, we had to go over the the base rules and. Mm. and the homebrew rules we're using for this world and how everything works, right? Um, so that's why it's session zero. Um, we just happened to get through enough of that really quickly. We were actually able to get into actually a bit of play. Um, so we are technically on our first mission. So um, I assume it's going to take a few more sessions. Yeah, exactly, a prologue. You know, just uh, a, a little tester mission so that we can figure out exactly how things work and uh, how to use our abilities properly. Like, I've got a whole ass cheat sheet now for this character. Um, but I am going to get out of here, I think. Uh, let's see if there's anybody to raid. Got a few viewers, why not, right? Um... There we go. Got one. <laughs> Aid trips. 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 So, uh, thank you for coming and hanging out. And we will see you all soon. And remember, everybody, uh, be savage to go home. Peace.